Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wellston Golden Rocket Football right here on BMG Media. Bill Norris, I'm Bub Norris, bringing you your action tonight. Coming to you live from Wellston High School, C.H. Jones Field, downtown football area to where the Wellston Golden Rockets are about 14 and a half minutes or so away from opening kickoff tonight, Bill, against the uh, Fairland Dragons, who is a very, very uh, tough opponent. They uh, won at Portsmouth West last week. Very, very tough football game. They ended up coming out on top on that game by the score 14 to 13. And uh, that's who we play here tonight. But let's recap just a little bit. Last week, uh, the Rockets went on the road to uh, Oak Hill and um, was not the score that we wanted. We ended up uh, losing that one 27 uh, to nothing. Had a couple injuries. It's good to have uh, our starting quarterback back tonight. Johnny Scott should be back under center tonight, we anticipate. And um, could we be seeing a little bit of a baby Kemp in the backfield for the Rockets. Just like the uh, Norse boys are up in the booth, the Kemp boys <laughs> are in the backfield. There you go. And uh, looking forward to that tonight. Again, um, uh, just a little bit of things going on this week for the, more than a little bit, but actually a lot, uh, going on this week for the, for the Golden Rockets. Um, Coach Justice no longer with the, the Rockets uh, t uh, for the re remaining of the season. Um, he has resigned uh, due to health issues. And Coach Dan Polson is going to take over the helm as interim head coach for the Golden Rockets for the remainder of the season. And uh, it's just unfortunate. Uh, so we would love for all of the fans, if you are in town tonight, come out and support the Golden Rockets. We have a nice crowd on hand so far tonight. We're about, uh, oh, about nine minutes away from an opening kickoff here, actually. And uh, we'd love to see them come out to the stadium tonight, uh, Bill. Yeah, the Wellston Rockets have had difficulties for the last several weeks, losing players uh, and now the coach. So mentally, uh, they need to snap back, put up a good effort tonight, and put some scores on the board. And we certainly hope they can do that. Again, they have been through a lot. So we just want to rally the community uh, tonight around uh, this, this pro football program and these kids. Again, as Bill, as you've mentioned, we've, they've been through a lot. So we just want to give them all the support that we possibly can, uh, waiting for the officials to meet for the players uh, for the coin toss here this evening. Again, you are listening to Wellston Golden Rocket football right here on BMG Media. And again, Bill Norris and I'm Bub Norris bringing you your action tonight here from C.H. Jones Field. Rockets come in here with a record of 0-1. Fairland comes in with a record of 1-0. and And again, Bill, uh, just to recap last week, um, Rockets just weren't able to get things going. They had some bright spots, and as you mentioned, calling the game last week, five steps forward, seven steps back. They have got to learn, or they have got to be successful for several plays in a row. They would hit, and then they would miss. Hit and miss. And they could not capitalize on Oak Hill's penalties. Oak Hill had a lot of penalties starting out the game last week. Uh, I think in the first quarter they had close to 10 penalties, and uh, the Rockets, as you mentioned, just were not able to capitalize on those things. Uh, we've had some special things going on here so far tonight. Mr. Scott Adams uh, jumped out of a perfectly good airplane for whatever reason, bringing the football down to us tonight. So he is uh, he's already landed, thank goodness, uh, in a safe way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a safe way he landed. And we believe this may be Hall of Fame night tonight here at Wellston High School, C.H. Uh, Jones Field as well. But we'll try to get some more details for you there. Uh, BMG Media Golden Rocket Football possible. We're going to run down those sponsors here in just a little bit. But uh, again, um, football Friday night, week two. As the Rockets get ready to face the tail and drag it through. At about ten and a half minutes. have won the toss here this evening. 
Not sure if they chose. I think they did choose to receive. So yes. Golden Rocket, won, Rockets did win the talk. So to we're about nine and a half minutes again away from opening kickoff here tonight. You are listening to Golden Rocket football right here on BMG Media. Bill Norris and I'm Bub Norris bringing you your action tonight. Down on the field, we have our cameraman, Mr. Chase Phillips. Um, does a great job down there for us. I want to thank him for his sideline work here this evening as well. And you're getting ready to listen to the Wellston Golden Rocket Marching Band. They'll be taking the field here just any moment. Once they take the field, we're going to let you listen to uh, their pregame show for just a little bit when they get ready to take the field. Bill, again, let's talk real quick about what we, what we think that the Rockets um, are going to have to accomplish tonight. Good thing having Johnny Scott back under center. And uh, we're looking for Baby Kemp to step up in the backfield at tailback spot tonight. Could possibly also see um, a new offensive system tonight with Coach Dan Polson, coached for, with Coach Smith that was here the last three years, uh, going with the spread offense. We may see some of that tonight. It looked like that's the, that that was what they were doing in their pregame. Uh, and we hope that since the boys already know that system, that they can adjust, make the adjustments, snap right back into it, and move the ball down the field. Which is a good thing because the, the Rockets are, let's just be honest, they're going to really need all the help they can get tonight. Fairland is a very, very, very good football team, and this is going to be a monumental task again tonight for our Golden Rockets. So we're just uh, hoping that we play very competitive here this evening and we can keep everybody safe through the course of this game and uh, get some great things going here. Uh, the, next week, the Minford Falcons will be coming to town. And the Rockets, uh, actually, I believe that might be on the road. We'll, we'll double check that for you here shortly. But, another uh, tough game, though. Another very tough. We don't uh, want to forget, uh, we just, uh, one of our new cameramen, Delson, just met him tonight. He's a high schooler over here at Wellston High School. And uh, just met him, and uh, I told him back when we were in school, uh, before the Internet, uh, we were using 8-millimeter and 16-millimeter <laughs> film to uh, film these football games. <laughs> yeah, some great memories. We have that. And uh, speaking of which, um, my wife Jody had made us that the football DVD, the DVD uh, yes. of all of our high school games on there, and they put it that in that one time, and Everybody, was, she was just amazed that we could remember, okay, 88 far, 32 trap, uh, 26 reverse, all of those plays. She goes, how do you remember all that stuff? Well, that's student just when you go to war with guys, that's yeah. just what it is. Student body left, student body right. <laughs> so six and a half minutes away from opening kickoff here tonight, the Golden Rockets are going to be facing the Fairland Dragons. We're doing the, uh, tonight we're doing the Hall of Fame here this evening. As well, we're going to direct your attention down to the center of the field at this time. Tonight is a culmination of years of hard work and sacrifice, being a great player and an even better teammate. They are truly Golden Rockets. We thank all three of you for what you have done for your name on the front of your jersey and not for the name on the back of your jersey. Congratulations to all of you on this outstanding honor and achievement. Our first inductee tonight is Brianna Hall, born October 31st, 1991, a 2010 graduate of Wellston High School. Brianna Hall starred in volleyball and softball for the Golden Rockets, lettering four years in each sport, along with one letter in basketball. On the volleyball court, Hall learned all TVC honors in 2008 and 2009, and was also named first team all district both seasons. On the diamond, Hall was selected all TVC first team, all district as a sophomore, junior, and senior. She helped lead the Wellston to TVC and sectional championships in 2007 and 2008. For her softball career, Hall hit 441 with 109 hits, 77 runs, and 74 RBIs with a slugging percentage of 773 and an on-base average of 504. She totaled 27 doubles, 5 triples, and her 15 career home runs established a new school record. An outstanding student as well, all made the TVC academic honor roll a total of 7 times, 3 each in volleyball and softball, and 1 time in basketball. 
inducted into the Wellston High School Athletic Hall of Fame, August 26, 2022. Fans, Brianna Hall. Our second inductee tonight is Mike Johnson, born June 24, 1957, a 1975 Wellston High School graduate. Mike Johnson lettered in football, wrestling, and track and field for the Golden Rockets and became the greatest middle distance runner in school history. His fourth place finish in the 880 yard run in the 1975 OHSAA Class AA Track and Field State Championships is the best finish in any event by a Wellston Hinclad. Johnson won the SEOAL 880 yard run in both 1974 and 1975, setting a new school record as a junior at 2 minutes 1.9 one sec seconds and a new league and school record as a senior at 1 minute 59.3 seconds. In 1975 sectional tournament, Johnson set a new meet and school record in the 880 with a time of 1 minute 58.8 seconds, followed by a first place district finish with a time of 1 minute 58 seconds, 58.7 seconds, again breaking his own school record. In the state meet, Johnson ran a personal best of 1 minute 58 flat in the preliminaries, followed by his fourth place finals finish with a time of 1 minute 58.4 seconds. At the time of induction, Johnson's time of 158.0 still holds as the official school record with the race now run as 800 meters since 1980. During his junior and senior seasons, Johnson set a new school mark in the 880 a total of eight times. He also graduated with the school record in the mile relay. Inducted into the Wellston High School Athletic Hall of Fame, August 26, 2022. Fans, Mr. Mike Johnson. Our third inductee tonight is Thomas Mays, born June 9, 1985, a 2003 graduate of Wellston High School. Thomas Mays was a standout football player for the Golden Rockets, helping lead Wellston to two TVC championships in 2001 and 2002. A four-year letter winner, Mays was also named All-TVC and First Team All-District as a sophomore, junior, and senior. Mays was selected the 2001 TVC Defensive MVP, MVP and the 2002 TVC Offensive MVP. As a senior, he was the Southeast District Division IV Defensive Player of the Year. Mays was a three-time All-State honoree at linebacker, special mention as a sophomore, second team as a junior, and first team as a senior. In his senior year alone, Mays rushed for 1,645 yards on 188 carries with 21 touchdowns and caught 12 passes for 198 yards and one score. Defensively, in 2002, he had totaled 88 tackles, 13 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, 4 interceptions, and recovered 3 fumbles. He returned one of the interceptions for a touchdown and also returned one punt and one kickoff for a score. For his career, Mays rushed 3,277 yards, good for the second most in school history. Following high school, Mays entered the United States Marine Corps and is now a proud U.S. military veteran. During his service time, Mays earned the following awards and honors, the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, the Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, Combat Action Ribbon in Iraq, the Purple Heart Award, Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, Iraq Cam Campaign Medal with Bronze Star, Global War on Terrorism Service Award, National Defense Service Medal, Navy Meritorious Unit Commendation, and the Navy Unit Commendation. Inducted into the Wellston High School Athletic Hall of Fame, August 26, 2022. Fans, Mr. Thomas Mays. Brianna, Mike, and Thomas, congratulations again on your outstanding high school athletic careers and on tonight's induction into the Wellston High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Fans, let's give these three former Golden Rockets a great round of applause. Welcome back once again, Rocket fans. You are looking at the uh, Hall of Fame inductees this evening here for Wellston High School. Brianna Hall, uh, Mike Johnson, and Thomas Mays, all three inducted into the High School Hall of Fame. Of course, Brianna Hall just had an amazing career in softball and volleyball here at Wellston High School. 
Mike Johnson had an amazing career at track and field and also in football. And then Thomas Mays, uh, just an outstanding running back, Bill, as we, as we heard made mention of uh, the second rusher in Wellston High School history. Just one of those kind of players you could look to him in every situation on the football field, and he's just that tough of a player. And he gets you the yards that you need when you need them. When you needed them. And, uh, and most of all, uh, and I'm sure everyone would agree with this, uh, his military service uh, provided, he provided for our country is just amazing. I know he had a serious uh, accident when he was in the military, and he's recovered uh, from that. But, um, of course, anytime you're in the military like that and you have uh, injuries, it always leaves scars for the rest of your life. And hats off to Thomas Mays and all those guys um, that were inducted, all, inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. Right now, you are listening to the Wellston Golden Rocket Marching Band. We're going to let, listen to them as they make their way across the field here in just a moment. And once they come over, we will pick you back up here in just a moment. Point your finger at him. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Gentlemen, remove your caps for playing of our national anthem. Once again, Golden Rocket fans, you're listening to Wellston Golden Rocket football right here on BMG Media. Bill Norris and I'm Bub Norris bringing you your action tonight from C.H. Jones Field right here in Wellston, Ohio. Bill, as we mentioned uh, early on in our pregame here this evening, Golden Rockets have a monumental task ahead of them tonight, uh, facing a very, very good Fairland football team who made a pretty good run in the playoffs last year. And uh, in doing that, we're going to call out the Fairland players right now. Their roster, uh, Cam Kitts, number three, Jack Hayden, number four, Lucas Bombas, 
number five, C.J. Graham. Number six, David David Murray. Number seven, Christian Collins. Number eight, Eli Pine. Number nine, Titus Brooks. Number 10, Bryson Hunt. Number 11, Tristan Daly. Number 12, Peyton Jackson. Number 13, Keegan Smith. Number 15, Aiden Miller. Number 17, Connor Black. Number 20, Garrett Spence. Number 21, Quentin Cremines. Number 22, Weston Goff. Number 24, Parker Wyatt. Number 25, Gabe Polson. Number 26, Zion Meek. Martin, I'm sorry. Uh, number 27, Steeler Leap. Number 32, Will Calico. Number 44, St Stephen Perigo. Number 45, Luke Ball. Number 50, Cooper Charles. Number 51, Stephen Rhodes. Number 52, Mason Ward. Number 54, Ryan McLean. Number 57, Ryan Dixon. And number 58, Wyatt Calico. Bill, would like for you to run down the roster for the Golden Rockets at this time. For the 2022 Wilson High School football team, number one, Johnny Scott. Number two, Roger Woods. Number three, Josh Clarkson, number five, Justin Jackson, number six, Jared Meekham, number seven, Evan Cantor, number eight, Seth Lambert, number 12, Bennett Yardinichek, number 17, Isaac McWilliams, number 19, uh, Walter Weber, number 20, Connor McWilliams, number 21, Rayleigh Thompson, number 22, Brenton Breach, number 23, Mason Collins, number 28, Shea Grady, number 32, Tucker Irvin, Number 37, Cole Kemp, and number 44, Bodie Kemp, the Kemp boys. Number 50, Caleb Jacob Walton, number 51, Braden Myers, number 52, Devin Barnhill, number 53, Hunter Brown, number 54, Hunter Collins, number 58, Brandon Haburn, number 59, Michael Richardson, number 60, Bryce Lambert, number 64, Dayton Breach, number 72, Xavier Miller, 73, Dylan Helm Tucker, number 74, Bryce Boyer, number 77, Landon Hypes, and number 78, Gage Goheen. Bill, uh, again tonight, Rockets are going to be short a couple players. Um, again, our, our starting tailback, uh, Mr. Kemp, number 44, uh, your senior tailback who, who stepped in last year, uh, filled in latter part of the season, and then this year was expected to get expected to get all the carries, got hurt last week. We're thankful that the injury wasn't uh, as bad as what it was. He had a deep uh, thigh bruise uh, to his bone as well, and uh, it's good to see him uh, standing on the sidelines tonight, and good to see our, our quarterback back in action tonight too, Johnny Scott, uh, going back under center for the Golden Rockets. The Rockets did win the toss, and they chose to receive, so they will be going um, from south to north. Again, a very, very good opponent the Rockets going to be playing tonight. They're going to have to... Uh, get things started early and maybe set the tone right off the bat. Clock's at 12 minutes. Officials ready to hand the kick of the ball. That's number 25, and that is Gabe Polson for the Fairland Dragons. Bob, I think that by normally folks will defer to the second half. Wilson has chosen to take the ball. I think they want to set the pace of this game. Try to get something going here, so right. very good point. Official blows his whistle. We're getting ready to play ball. Kick is in the air. It's going to be a short kick. Caught at about the 31-yard line. Rockets bring it up the left side. Gang tackled by the Dragons. Brings it up to about the 39, where the Golden Rockets will take over first and 10. Taking a look at that starting line up, up front, Bill. We spoke about it last week. The Rockets up front have to get better. There's no secret about that. And our guys up front, we've got to get better. Number 59, we're going to speak of Michael Richardson, uh, Brendan Tabor, um, Xavier Miller, our guys up front. Uh, again, they're going to have to set the tone against this defensive front against the Dragons. Rockets are going to come out, and they're going to go spread offense right off the bat, which is the same offensive set that the Rockets displayed last year under C Coach Smith. Rockets going twins to the right. I man in the backfield. Scott at shotgun. Claps his hands, takes the snap. Hands off, and we have a flag right off the bat. Well, kind of a continuance from last week. We and need to, um, we need to cut those out, and we need to move that. This uh, what I was uh, looking at last week is Wellston needs to get a three to four yard surge from those linemen up front and uh, push that ball down the field. Well, not starting out on the right foot so far tonight, but hopefully things will get better here for us. Five yard penalty on the Rockets, make it first and fifteen. They're going to go back to the. Uh, 
Gonna, gonna go back to the I formation. Scott at shotgun once again. Takes the snap, drops back two steps, looks down to the flats. Got his man, he reverses his spin. Gets outside the pocket. He's under heavy pressure and gonna be sacked. Gonna be brought down in the backfield again. Uh, Johnny done a great job keeping his eyes built downfield, looking for receivers. They were covered, and he had to try to make something happen, got outside, and was sacked for a loss. He just about got outside, and the man had, uh, he needed about a half a step more to get by him, and he didn't make it. Uh, and loss of another five on the play. Now let's make it second down and 20 for the Rockets. We're just getting underway here tonight at C.H. Jones Field, 11.25 to go here in the first quarter. Bill Norris on Bub Norris bringing in your action tonight from C.H. Jones Field here in Wellston, Ohio. The Rockets facing the Fairland Dragons, second and 20. Puts baby Kemp to his right. Cole Kemp. Scott at shotgun. Look for the blitz. Here they come. Get rid of it. Got a flag on the play. You know, now that you said that. And again, the Rockets offside. Again, another penalty. Baby Kemp doesn't sound too bad. I like that as a nickname. I don't know if he'll <laughs> like it. Well, he may have to just get used to it the rest that, of the uh, year. <laughs> that, uh, that might stick. <laughs> All right, let's make it uh, third down and 25 now for the Rockets. Penalty on the play. Just getting action underway. 11 minutes to go here in the first quarter at C.H. Jones Field. Rockets, uh, unfortunately, Bill, picking up right where they left off Fairland, last week. Going the wrong direction. Fairland grass. hasn't had to put up too much defense yet. And again, the Rockets match up fairly decent with them up front. Scott sets his troops, takes a snap, looks downfield, under heavy pressure again, steps up in the pocket. He's got a little bit of running room, bounces it outside. Great move by Scott up the right side. Takes a shot on the far side, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Great run. Be able to move and move quick and use your mind. See what's open and take that chance and go for it. And he did. Great play by Johnny Scott. Uh, Rockets done a fairly decent job blocking that time. Uh, the pocket started to collapse a little bit. Scott stepped up and gained uh, about 15 yards. Give him, we'll go call it third and 11. Rockets in that spread offense. Scott steps back, looks upside, throws it. And it is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, but it's going to bring it fourth down. Again, um, Bill, I'm not totally disappointed with the first series of the Rockets, although they didn't gain any positive yardage, we've seen some positive things on that series. Yeah, what I have seen right now is that uh, uh, the Golden Rocket linemen have been able at least to hold Fairland out a little bit to give the quarterback just a little bit of time. Which is something that we were concerned about when we seen last week with Evan Fisher for the Oaks just completely dominated that game, both sides of the ball last week for the Oak Hill Oaks. Yeah, that's right. Brendan Breach on the punt, takes the snap, gets it away. And it's going to be an end over end punt. Going to hit it about the 30, going to be taken at the 20 by number 27. He's uh, juking and jiving, trying to get up the center field, hit by a host of rockets at the 40 yard line. That returner was number 27, Steeler Leap. He's a uh, 5'10, 180 pound senior for the Dragons. Well, let's see if the, the defense, Bill, can step up and yeah. uh, let's do a, a three and out. Let's see if we can get that here tonight. Again, Fairland's going to be one of the better teams the Rockets are going to face all year, and we don't say that lightly. This team is loaded. Uh, Rockets are going to have to be clicking tonight on all cylinders to yeah, keep no, this thing close. No arm tackles tonight. You're going to have to hit these boys square because you've got running backs that are 200-plus pounds. Again, uh, number 27 back there. That's still her leap at tailback. Rockets give him a little different look. Option going to do a reverse, number one around the left side. He has a lot of real estate to run. He's off to the races. Anybody going to catch him? We have a flag on the play. He's down the sideline. He's going to be tackled, but he, not before he gets in the... They're going to mark him. Maybe coming back. Well, it never ceases to amaze us when you get things rolling. It takes one person, and the ref is always watching. Again, um, number one for the Dragons is a 5,969 pound sophomore. Um, he looks bigger than that. He was uh, trucking it down the sideline pretty good. He was, he, uh, <laughs> as, as my dad used to say, he turned on the ether. 
He did. A holding call is against the Dragons. It's going to be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And a horse tackle. Those penalties are going to offset. Horse collar tackle, offset. So, um, going to do the play over again. Yeah, the good old do-over. Yeah, you got to hate those things. Horse collar tackle, well, at least we're going to do the play over. The Rockets, uh, Bill, I think, had that play defended very well, but they ran the reverse, and that's what caught us off guard. The defensive ends have got to stay at home. That has been, that has always been an issue uh, to get sucked in on a reverse, and then they run all over the end of the field. Dragons are going to split it out as well. They're going to go um, spread offense as well. Number 12, a quarterback. Puts his man in motion to the left. Going to hand off to the tailback over the left side. He's got some real estate as well. He's got a first down and more. Up the sideline he goes into Rocket territory. Goes out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Again, that's the tailback Steeler leap. Again, Bill, let's, let's just be honest. Um, you, you can just tell the difference in agility and ability with some kids compared to others, and there's really no comparison on that play. Um, yeah. Talent or effort will only take you so far. So leap at tailback. Quarterback takes the snap. Same play to the right side of the field. Bouncing and bouncing in and out. Great tackle in the center there. Getting up off the bottom of the pile for the Rockets. Number 59, I believe. Correction, 58, and that's Tabern. And uh, we've called his name a lot the last couple weeks. And uh, we just need him to be really big as well. He's a senior. And uh, he's playing that linebacker spot for the Rockets. So uh, he done a great job. He gained six on the play, but nice tackle by Tabern on the play. You know, it looks good when you see them fellows running, but boy, the action is really right there on the line. Peyton, that shotgun for the Dragons. Takes the snap, hands off to 27 again over the right side, hit at the line of scrimmage, and great job by the Rockets on that play. Great job of tackling. Xavier Miller on the bottom coming off the pile, and then Tabern as well. I believe uh, Gage Goheen set that up by blocking the hole and making the Fairland runner switch his position and go another direction, allowing Wilson to pick up the tackle. Fairland going with no huddle. Quarterback and shotgun. Rockets jump, and they're going to call us for the jump, and that's going to give the Dragons those the little things, uh, considering all things going on, little things that the little mistakes the Rockets cannot afford to make against the team. Oh, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Wow. Wellston man must have jumped after the Fairland fella on the line. What I yeah, was motion. talking about earlier about it all happens up front. Those boys have got to uh, push, and whether it's offense or defense, whoever gets that initial, whoever controls that line, uh, allows the running backs to hit those holes. Let me say this, Bill. Already seeing a big difference in this Rocket football team under the helm of Coach Polson. Different attitude and it shows up on the field. Fairland takes a snap from shotgun. He rolls to his right, looking downfield, lobs it across the middle, incomplete. Got to bring up a fourth down for the Dragons and very well defended by the Rockets, Bill. The Rockets have got to be happy with the play so far, being able to stop the uh, Fairland. Again, it's still really, really early, folks. Uh, 7.55 to go here in the first quarter. Rockets, uh, again, you're seeing a different mentality on the field with these kids. Up front again, number 10, making some noise defensively for the Rockets. We had his name last week. He's not in the program. Someone get that to us real quick if they would. Fairland going for it. Fourth and five. Quarterback takes a snap. He's under pressure. Throws it down the quarter. Uh, and he's wide open. Touchdown, Dragons. Yeah, the Wilson Rockets. Blown coverage. Uh, wide open and... and Jogged right then. He got to he got to pass right while he's standing in the end zone. Yeah. Rockets with a blown coverage on that play. Up to then, defense was looking pretty good. Held their own. Uh, gave up that big play. 7.50 to go here in the first quarter. Dragon strike first. Six to nothing, your score. Number 25 on the kick, the extra point for the Dragons, and that's Gabe Polson. Number 10 on the hold, and that is Bryson Hunt. Kick is up. It is good. And that's going in the neighbor's backyard on the south end of the C.H. Jones field. I recall many of those football fields. Absolutely. You uh, put many of them there. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bill, uh, they landed in Bill Mackumber's backyard. That's it, Bill Mackumber. <laughs> that's right. 
Hey, again, another shout out to one of my neighbors down on McGee Lane tonight. Uh, Phil Jenkins, you're listening. Shout out to you tonight, faithful Rocket follower. I have a Hope shout you're out tuned tonight. in tonight. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Brown Girl, Carla Norris, 32 <laughs> years of marriage. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's a long time. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. That was yesterday or uh, today? Wednesday. Come on now. Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday. Right. Two days ago. Well, she always says it's the 23rd, and then when we get to the 23rd, she says it's the 24th. Well, that's a, that's a huh. uh, common that's, uh, mistake. That sounds like a local says, problem to me. Yeah, that she says <laughs> that I make. <laughs> Back deep for the Rockets, number 22, Brendan Breach. Again, size-wise, Rockets match up very well against the Dragons, but again, you can tell some athleticism just a little bit different. Give them just a little bit of an edge. But uh, this is why we lace them up. You come out and play. A lot of those things. A lot of times the heart absolutely. can uh, make up for a little bit of that. Kick is short. Taken by Breach at about the 20. Breach trying to pick his, uh, pick his steps. Tries to get outside. Going to be tackled at about the 30-yard line where the Rockets will take over first and 10. Well, the Wilson Golden Rockets, uh, the, the, the way they set up on the kickoffs is they get a bunch of fellows back there to block, and then they let their running back pick the, the open spot. Then they have the jailhouse, jailhouse break or rock or whatever we call that. I never did like waiting that long. <laughs> if I got my hands on the ball, I wanted to go and do get something with it. Get up the field, it. baby. 7.44 to go here in the first. Rockets trail 7 nothing. your score. Bill Norris on Bub Norris bringing you your action tonight. From C.H. Jones Field, Rockets uh, going up under center on this one with Baby Kemp in the backfield. Takes a snap, hands off to Kemp over the left He's side. He's the out of the real estate. Puts his head down, nice piece of running. Nice tackle also by number He's a junior, but uh, Baby Kemp picking up about seven for the yeah. Rockets, Bill. Uh, he's, he's pretty quick back there. And, Does a uh, really nice job. Didn't take him long to bust out. And picked up about seven yards. Again, we're seeing, uh, even though the score, we're trailing, we're seeing some positive things happen for the Rockets uh, emotionally and mentally out here so far tonight. That's right. More confidence. Perfect word to use. Scott at shotgun. Kemp right behind him. Takes a snap. Hands off over the right side. Slips and goes down. Yeah, Pistols are going to spot him down there. On that slip, his knee hit the ground. They have no other choice than to. He down. may have had uh, may have had a nice little break away on that play. Yeah, had I he think, not slipped. I think he would have broke around the corner. As our old buddy Bob Walton used to say, if ifs and buts were candy, candy and nuts, nuts, oh what a merry <laughs> Christmas this would be. Oh, Seven fifteen to go in the first quarter. Rockets trail six to nothing. Bill Norris and I'm Bub Norris bringing your action tonight. Hey, if you're sitting there watching at home, call your friends here at the stadium, tell them to listen in, and they can hear us broadcast. Scott at shotgun. Kemp behind him. Takes a snap. Going to bootleg to his left. Tries to get outside. Has a man. Caught. Thompson, 21. Going to be just short of the first down. But uh, Brayley Thompson with the catch. Nice throw by Johnny Scott. Again, positive yardage. Positive things happening on that drive. Well executed play. And um, the, the, the Dragons, even though they're on the top, 7 nothing your score, Rockets doing some positive things here in the first quarter under Coach Polson. Back to punt, Brenton Breach for the Rockets. Back deep for the Dragons, number 27 once again. He's their all-to-go guy. Steeler leap. The punt is good, the snap. It's close to being blocked. He gets it away. Going to hit at the 30. Steep going to pick it up. He's under heavy pressure. And uh, not much happening on that play. Great coverage again by number 58. For the Rockets coming up, making a great play, and that's Tabor, Brendan Tabor. I tell you what, you see some folks come alive when you get three or four good plays put together. The crowd is energetic. The Mentioning sun's the going crowd. down. Mentioning the crowd. We have almost standing room only tonight. Great seeing the student section, all of the students, the students in that section on their feet cheering on the Rockets. It looks like they have construction outfits on. Maybe that's, uh, does that represent the wrecking crew? or <laughs> Could what, be. What, maybe we could call the student section the wrecking crew. 
6.02 to go in the first quarter. Rockets trail 7 0. Your score. Bill Norris on Bub Norris. The official comes to the sidelines. We have officials timeout. Officials timeout on the field. Giving the uh, players a little break in the action. Um, again, the last defensive stand with the exception of one play, Bill. Rockets have uh, done a pretty nice job. Yeah, if they can, if they can hold and hold the line and not give up a big play hold keep because that's where uh, Fairland has won the battle so far was out on the corners if they can contain those corners Wellston's going to have some good things happen again the Rockets match up very well size wise up front against uh, the Fairland Dragons as you mentioned the defensive ends have to stay home because Fairland will run the reverse on you Peyton Jackson at shotgun Leap to his left, takes a snap. Leap takes the handoff up the middle. Hit by a couple defenders, making first contact for the Rockets, number 78. That's uh, Gage Goheen. Give the Dragons a gain of about four on the play. Again, not bad defensive play up front for the Rockets. That's right, Bub. But you've got to contain, you've got to hold that line a little tighter. Four, Let's yards, four yards is too much. Again, let's talk about the experience or the inexperience of our corners. These guys are next man up, first guys playing there in these spots this year. Right. Quarterback takes a snap, going to pitch out to Leap over the left side. He's looking upfield. He has a great wall on the far side. He's off to the races. Uh, knocked out of bounds, and we have a flag on the play. Uh, it's probably going to be a face mask on the Rockets. Knocked out of bounds by Seth Lambert. And there again, the defensive end and the corner. Uh, got pulled inside or uh, pushed inside, either way you want to look yeah. at it. And the man had plenty of roof, room to run up that corner. He had a great wall built on that side of the field. Again, that defensive end on the far side has got to be able to fight through that. Uh, looks like I missed the signal. Five-yard penalty, maybe call a five-yard face mask. So now the Dragons inside rocket territory at about the 26-yard line. 5-17 to go here in the first quarter. Rockets trail 7 to nothing. Your score, but a lot of a lot more positive things to talk about tonight than what we did last week. In number 12 at shotgun. That's Peyton Jackson with leap to his left. Takes a snap. Hands off the leap up the middle. He's got hmm. some running room over the left side. He's off to the races again. And uh, hit by a couple rockets. I thought he was going out of bounds, but he stayed in bounds. Huge gain on the play again. Gets down to about the two-yard line. Again, the Fairland Dragons, Bill, just working on the left, that left side of their offensive line and that right side of the defensive line for the Fairland, Rockets. Fairland spread their whole offense out all across the field. Receivers on both sides, and they handed it off right up the middle. Wellston was spread out, and he had plenty of running room. First and goal, I believe, for the Dragons. On the ball on the four-yard line. Jackson at the snap, takes a snap. Going to keep it good around the left side. And he marches right in the end zone for a touchdown. And Bill, we spoke about this uh, earlier as well. That defensive end has got to stay put, and they haven't done it so far tonight. No, it, and as you'd mentioned, uh, when we when you go with the next man up, uh, Yarden Check Boy was defensive end. He got mm. a collarbone injury. So yes. it, as we said earlier at the beginning of the game, Wellston has really taken a hit on injuries, uh, uh, other reasons that boys have, have had to set out or leave. And now the coaching situation, and it kicks up, and it's good. 4.54 to go here in the first quarter. It's the Fairland Dragons 14, Golden Rockets zero. But again, Bill, uh, we're looking at a Golden Rocket football team. Quite honestly, most of those kids would be starting on the JV football team this year, okay? Yeah. Now, due to the, due to the circumstances, certainly not making excuses, we're giving you facts, folks. Um, again, most of these kids would be would be starting on the JV team. Now, once we noticed last week when our JV team went up against Oak Hill's day, JV team, we dominated. Right. Okay. So let's keep everything in its proper perspective, folks. We've got a lot of kids out here tonight that is first year varsity players. I'm talking probably eight kids on the field are first year varsity players for the Rockets. Yeah. Last week we used the term trial by fire. And, and that's where you have no other choice but to put the next man up, and he may be experienced and he may not. 
Uh, and if he's not, well, he's going to get all the experience he can handle. A lot of OJT tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> 4.54 to go here in the first quarter. 14 0. Your score Rockets trail the Fairland Dragons. Now, Fairland has had two short kicks, so we can expect another short kick. If the man from Wellston back there is that uh, number 12? Uh, Brenton Breach, number 22. Fairland's got a new kicker in there, number 24, Parker Wyatt, in kicking for the Fairland Dragons. He approaches the ball, going to kick it on the ground. Rockets gain it. Number 10 gets the ball, tries to get outside, puts his head down, tackled by several of the Dragons. Rockets bring it up to the 34-yard line. Again, uh, trial by fire, as we've yeah. mentioned. A lot of new kids out there for the Rockets. Uh, plenty to build on. All over trailing, 14 to nothing. We are seeing still a lot of positive things here tonight for the Rockets. Last week I had talked about the Wilson Rockets just didn't look like it had much confidence out on the field totally different atmosphere or totally different mindset that we can see on these players as they're uh, executing their plays. And, and playing one of the better teams probably in the Southeast District for the Fairland Dragons. 4.50 to go here in the first quarter. Scott at shotgun with Baby Kemp to his left. Takes a snap, looks to his right, throws out in the flats, has a man, it's caught. Give him a gain of about... Uh, Four on the play, great pass, great throw, great catch. This is what we talked about last week, those quick hitter plays. And we needed those. Absolutely. You got five yards, four yards, real quick right there. Again, Second let's down. talk about this. A great catch, Michael Weber with a great catch on the far side. He's our kicker. He's never played a varsity snap in his life other than kicking extra points and well, makes an amazing catch on the far side of the field. A lot of times when they uh, come up for the experience, how much experience you got? And I would always say, well, counting today, <laughs> Scott at shotgun for the Rockets takes a snap hands off the camp up the left side he tries to get through the line of scrimmage not much happening there number 57 meets him right in the hole and that is Ryan Dixon six foot 223 pound junior and he looks every bit of that he looks he reminds you of Reed Carrico from Ironton 57 does the way Carrico who now is at Ohio State looks a lot like him plays a lot like him yeah that was a uh, that was a crash right there in the hole and uh Fairland won that one. Loss of about one on the play. Rockets are going to go twin receivers to the right, single receiver to the left. Maybe another quick hitter. Bringing Evan Cantor to the near side. Scott at shotgun. Takes the snap. Looks downfield. He's got to get rid of it. He's under pressure. Under pressure. Under pressure. Blow your whistle, official. Huge loss on the play. Going to bring up fourth down for the Rockets. Again, Johnny will learn this, and I had to learn the hard way. You can't make a super play every play. There comes a point in time at the quarterback spot. If, you're, if you do your quick reads and nobody's open, you've got to get rid of the ball. Just throw it away. And uh, we learned that the hard way sometimes. We tried to make a play every play. And you simply can't do that when you've got three or four guys in your face. You just ditch it, the closest receiver, dump it, get it out of bounds, and move on and live to play another down. Breach with the snap. Snap, gets it away, nice end over end punt. Going to drive it all the way back to the 37. Takes a rocket roll. Number 27 has it. That's he Lee. has nowhere to go. And he, he gets off. outside. Still on his feet. Rockets missing some tackles here. Uh, Bill, we do have a flag on the play. Rockets had him cornered, three men, and uh, missed tackles. Missed tackles. And he picked up about another 10 to 12 yards, and then we had the flag. And it's going to be against the Dragons. Folks, if you hear me chime in while Bub's calling the game, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you the adrenaline is flowing. When I, see, when I see some folks come up and I thought, I was, look, I was looking at those Rockets and I'm like three against one. Oh, they're going to crush him. And he sidesteps two of them and the other miss attack. Easy, Tiger. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to get, uh, of course, uh, get the adrenaline flowing and blood pumping and it's like you want to be down there in the actions and come on get it so yeah here we go first and 10 for the Fairland Dragons ball at their own 37 yard line 233 to go in the first quarter Rockets trail 14 to nothing your score Jackson at shotgun with leap to his left takes a snap looks down Rockets putting on some pressure we have a flag on the play F pass up in the air intended uh, incomplete but uh, again Michael Weber on the coverage again a first year
player for the Rockets. Yeah, he was on him like glue. He was there. He was right there. He was there making the play and the coverage. And you can tell already, as we've mentioned many, many, many times already, just a, a different all-around looking football team for the Rockets tonight. 2.29 to go in the first quarter. Rockets trailing 14 to nothing. Great coverage. They're going to split number 13 out wide to the left. That's Keegan Smith. He's a sophomore. Rockets showing blitz. Jackson at shotgun. Takes a snap, looks downfield. He's going to crank it, and he's going to overthrow his guy, way overthrow. And again, look at the coverage, Bill, for the Rockets defensively. Yeah, the Rockets were pushing their way back, and, and uh, the, the pocket that the quarterback was setting in started to close up, and he had to get rid of it. Rockets getting a decent pass rush here tonight, too, right. something that we didn't see last week. Decent push, yeah. 224 to go in the first quarter. Second down and 15. For the Dragons, Rockets trail 14 to nothing. Your score, Bill Norris on Bub Norris, bringing you your action tonight from C.H. Jones Field right here in Wellston, Ohio. Second and 15 for the Dragons. Jackson at shotgun with number one, Cam Kitts to his left. He's a sophomore. Takes a snap, going to hand off the Kitts up the middle, trying to break a couple tackles. He does, and not before Brenton Breach comes up and drops the hammer, give him about a six-yard gain, but great contact by the by the Rockets again. Getting up off of the bottom of the pile. Well, this kid's played amazing so far tonight. Number 58 for the Rockets is Brennan, Bre Brennan Taburn, rather. I'm sorry. Doing a great job from that inside linebacker spot for the Rockets. No huddle. They're lining up. Rockets need to come to the come to the dance, and they just jump off sides. Those are just as what we call deal breakers. Yeah. Mental, Give them five yards. Mental mistake. Not sure Fanlon may not be in a four-down situation right here, Bill. Uh, third down and about four, and uh, they've they've been they've had some success tonight. Rockets need to hold, and I'm sure not sure that Fairlin would punt because of, of right. their uh, the score and their success. Jackson at shotgun with Cremines to his left, takes a snap, rolls to his left under heavy pressure. Jackson looking downfield, he's going to keep it. Rockets are going to stop him short of the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. But uh, I would think if you're fair on, you're probably in four down territory. Yeah, even when you're on your side of the field. Fourth and inches for the for the uh, Dragons. Now you talk about making a play. Wellston makes a play here. Bill, we cannot jump off sides. Can't do it. Fourth and inches. And they'll probably try to get Wellston to do that. Going to Tron, and we should be hearing some things coming from the sidelines from the coaches not to jump. Hold your spot, and we're hearing just that. You got Don't jump. They're going to pick up the first down. But, again, uh, nice game. Um, number eight getting up off the bottom of the pile for the Rockets, and that's Seth Lambert. He's a sophomore. Again, uh, a young man, Bill, that probably would be playing and starting. He would be on the JV team. Now it's as uh, due to circumstances, steps right in for the varsity game here tonight. Right. And making a nice tackle there. Yeah, and having having no other choice but to step up, uh, next man up. Mason Collins coming off the field for the Rockets and Evan Canner going in for the Rockets. Dragons goes trip receivers to the right. He rolls to the right. Trying to put a receiver out there, looking downfield. He's trying to get up field and uh, going to be hit and gets up to about, it's close to another first down. Give him a gain of about nine on the play. Again, that's the quarterback, uh, number 12, Peyton Jackson. He's a saw, he's a junior, rather. Wellston did a good job there stringing that play out, but the quarterback was able to uh, run around the corner still. That's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter where the Wellston Golden Rockets trail the Fairland Dragons by the score of 14 to nothing. You're listening to Golden Rocket Football right here on BMG Media, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back once again, Rocket fans, to Wellston High School football here on BMG Media. Bill Norse on Bub Norse bringing you your action tonight, coming to you live from C.H. Jones Field where the Golden Rockets trail the Fairland Dragons by the score of 14 to nothing. And, Bill, we spoke uh, pretty much. We'll talk more about that here after this play, but Rockets have shown a lot of improvement so far here tonight. I've seen great improvement from week one to week two. Jackson at shotgun with number 21 behind him, and that's Quentin Cremains. Takes a snap, going to play action. Jackson looking down the field. He has a man. He's going to overthrow him. That intended receiver was number 27, Steeler Leap. Yeah, if he had taken a little bit off that, uh, we'd be looking at another seven. But the Rockets had decent coverage on the play. But again, back there, again, we have all rookies in the backfield back there, with the exception of Brendan Breach. Brendan Breach, rather, I apologize. I keep pronouncing his name incorrectly. Brenton Breach, I'll get it right in a minute. Third inches for the Dragons. Kermeens at tailback. Jackson at shotgun. Trips receivers to the left, takes the snap. Hands off to Kermeens. He's up the middle, he has a lot of running room. Just picking and leaving his hole. Bill, he's really just a man amongst the boys out there so far tonight. He's a big boy, 200 plus pounds. He hit that hole, and uh, as I said earlier, uh, Fairland is getting the better push than the Wells Rockets on that line. They're getting out there three and four yards, and the back has no other choice but to follow, and by the time he's got his five yards, he's into the secondary. Yes, good point. Just getting second quarter action underway here at C.H. Jones Field. Dragon's going to go tri triple receivers to the left. Jackson at shotgun. Going to slip and go down in the backfield, number 21. He was trying to make a move at the line of scrimmage. Again, Rockets defensively came up and filled the gap right there. Landon Hypes, he's a sophomore, again, uh, for the Rockets up there in the front. And then Bryce Lambert, another sophomore. Again, you're looking at two kids, Bill, that probably would play JV ball going up against junior seniors. Big difference up front. But those two young men are doing a pretty decent job so far here tonight. Jackson throws it out in the flats to the right side to number one. He breaks a couple tackles, gains a first down, still weaving and juving and bobbing, and he's getting close to the end zone. I think he gets down to about the one-yard line. That pass complete to Cam Kitts, 169-pound uh, sophomore. Yeah, bobbing and weaving, juking and jiving, and weaved his way down near the goal line. Just following these blockers. Right. 10-40. To go in the first half, Rockets trail 14 to nothing, but Fairland knocking on the door once again. I'm here. Jackson takes a snap, hands off the 21 up the center, and he gets met right at the line of scrimmage, but not uh, before he makes it into the end zone for the Dragons once again. I get the feeling at this point in the game that Fairland can pretty much determine uh, through their running game, what the, what happens on the scoreboard, and they're just trying different plays as far as uh, a passing goes. Yes. 20 to nothing your score, 10 26 to go here in the first half remaining. Rockets trail. Number 25 on the kick, that's Gabe Polson. Snap is good. The kick is up. It is good also. 10 26 to go here remaining in the first half. Rockets trail the Fairland Dragons by the score of 21 to 0. Again, you're listening to Golden Rocket Football here on BMG Media. Bill Norris and I'm Bub Norris bringing you your action tonight. Rockets Although the Rockets, Bill, uh, getting it handed to them at this point, but uh, still right. seeing so many improvements. Right. Uh, if, if there were no improvements, I would say this is a blowout. But with the improvements the Rockets have made, the stringing together a positive plays one after another, being able at times to stop fairly, uh, and then other times when they're not, it's usually their youth that has caused uh, or the lack of experience that has caused the missing. 
With the cards that have been dealt to the Rockets, folks, quite honestly, we, we are just so proud of these kids for the effort that they're putting forth here this evening. Again, we've said we, we've said it and we'll say it again, seeing a lot of positive changes, changing attitudes, changing morale, changing confidence levels, all those things. And uh, maybe the Rockets, uh, you know, after tonight, can put together some things as they get into league play, maybe put in a, a few wins here for us, keep things heading in the right direction. Coach Polson, uh, again, offensive-minded guy, and his brother uh, being a defensive-minded guy, who's a, he's a coordinator. Back deep for the Rockets is breach for the Rockets. Kick's going to be high and short, taking it about the 27. Number three has it for the Rockets. Pops up in the middle, stays on his feet, stays on his feet, and that's Josh Clarkson, a freshman. And he's a kid, Bill. Uh, very possibly, even by the end of the season or next season, you're going to see a lot of him. Yeah, work his way. Uh, there, there is something about a kid who knows how to take a hit, give a hit, and will stick his nose in there <laughs> that coaches cannot deny them. They're sure. on the field, and they're getting on the field somehow. One way or the other, right? right? Because we've always said, hey, if you're good enough, if you find a way, the coach is going to see you and going to get you on the field. You'll get and on the field. He's one of those kids. Speaking of uh, Clarkson for the Rockets. He's only a freshman. Again, Johnny Scott in there um, at quarterback. He's only a sophomore. And you have Kemp in there. He is a junior. Takes a snap. Again, Thompson over the right side. Uh, not much happening there. Maybe give him a small game on the play. Not much of a surge by the Wellston line on that play. And, and uh, Fairland collapsed. Uh, really quickly. Bradley Thompson on the carry for the Rockets with 10 minutes to go here in the first half. 21 to nothing your score. Rockets trail the Fairland Dragons. Rockets are going to go a shotgun situation. Twin receivers to the right, single receiver to the left. Johnny Scott at shotgun. Takes a snap, drops back two or three steps, looks Rolls to his left, looking downfield, still on his feet. Slide, son, slide. Take the slide. <laughs> we right. never did learn to do that when he yeah. was in high school, but in this situation, he gets gains of about four or five on the play and should have taken the slide instead of taking the hit. I think uh, uh, at that time, in that time period, though, uh, they wanted you to just put your head down and get all they your did. Back in the back in the 80s. Not, not really worried about uh, players in general, but. Uh, Put your head down and go. Third and six for the Rockets. Nine minutes to go here, remaining in the first half. Kemp at, in the backfield. Outside of him, CJ, outside. Scott, play action rolls to his right. Under heavy pressure, he gets away from it, gets it away. Now there's the play that, that you... Yes. We were talking about there wasn't nothing he could do. He, he was slipping. The guy was right on him. Get rid of the football. Get rid of the football, and that's what he done. Brings up fourth down for the Rockets. Saves them probably 10 or 15 yards on that play by just dumping it and getting rid of it. Uh, smart play by Johnny Scott at that quarterback spot for the Rockets. Again, a sophomore kid probably being your starting JV quarterback due to circumstances. Again, he's out here on Friday night and doing a pretty doggone good job. Not bad. Not bad at all. 8.46 to go here in the first half. Breach on the kick. Snap is good. The punt, he gets it away. End over end punt, going to hit at about the 30. Taken in the backfield. Number 10, bobbing and a weaving and a juking and a beebing and a bobbing. And trips over his own man. <laughs> <laughs> Late for the dance. 8.37 to go here in the first half. Rockets trail 21 to nothing. Again, much, much improved from last week. Bryce Lambert out there as a sophomore, Bill, number 60, playing with the cast on his left hand. You reckon we could use that as a weapon? Well, no. A clothesline? There, there are rules for that. Uh, my son played football and he had a cast on it. And uh, he had to have, I, I think, about two inches of padding over it. Jackson at shotgun for the Dragons. Drops back, looking down the field, looking down the field, trying to get rid of it. In and out of the Kennedy. Just a little too much mustard and sidearm on that play. Yeah. 
Gunslinging. Gunslinging. Second and ten for the Dragons. But like I said, I think that they're trying out some of these plays, knowing mm -hmm. that if they yeah. give the ball to their big hoss, that he can pick up four sure. or five yards. Sure. Again, another yeah. sophomore, Seth Lambert, coming in the game for the Rockets in that defensive back spot. Again, give these kids a couple years. Completely different, different reversal. Story. Jackson, a shotgun, takes a snap, throws it out in the flats. Pass is complete, but um, loss on the play. Loss yeah. of about a yard uh, for the Dragons. He led his man just a little bit too, too much, and he had to dive and uh, was down where he caught it. Jackson's a sidearm slinger. Releases it uh, down on his lower release point. Third and 11 for the Dragons. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. Rockets trail 21 to nothing, your score. You gotta be so proud of these kids from Wellston. I'm They've telling you what. If they keep their head up, good things are gonna happen. They have fought through adversity after adversity, and they have come out tonight, even though the school board doesn't show it, with a lot more confidence tonight. We have a timeout taken on the field with 7.48 to go. Bill Norris, I'm Bub Norris, bringing you Wellston Golden Rocket football right here on BMG Media. Folks. There are room. There's room to sit. Not much. There's, not much, but there's a little <laughs> bit. Folks need to, uh, if you're watching at home and you have, a, uh, would like to come out and see the Golden Rockets live and in person, come on out. It, it is a, it is a real pleasure to see so many fans out here tonight, knowing the adversity that our team has gone through. Uh, so much this year already where most most people would just stay at the house wellston comes together once again pulls behind these young men forgetting about all the other distractions that's going on and have been going on they still come out to support the kids and it's just a great thing and let's do the same thing for the rest of the home games the rest of the year let's come out and support these young men we know it's an uphill battle we get it we understand it uh, been dealt a bad bad hand let's come out and support them and if you are watching from home uh, you can go on facebook you can leave comments and, uh, they have to be positive comments so there can't be no left. negative comments <laughs> you got to talk really good about the announcers jackson takes a snap from shotgun for the dragons steps oh, up in run. the pocket he's off to the races trying to get outside again another Stiff arm uh -oh, down the sideline again the there he goes oh. and a flag no flag no flag on the no play. Flag. Touchdown yeah. by the Dragons. Again, again, let's just elaborate a little bit on that play. You have a veteran quarterback. Right. Okay. Um, and, and you can tell they've been in the weight room, that type of thing, going up against a younger group of kids, and it just showed on that play. Right. Now, occasionally, uh, while we're waiting for the kick, we get folks that, that call in, text in, phone in, and the one phone in some plays. And it reminds me of uh, the old Sohia station that's right over the hill here. As we wait for the kick and it's up. No good. And it oh, is good. He squeaked it through. And uh, the owner there stopped us on the way to ball practice and gave us a little piece of paper to drop off to the coach and he had written down the play. And hey, he stopped us the next day and I wanted to know why we didn't use it the previous game. And the coach said, well, he said, first of all, he said, you're not allowed to have 12 men on the field. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any play will work if you can get an extra man out there. 28 to nothing, your score, 733 to go here in the first half. Rockets trail, but again, we've made mention multiple times. We'll mention it again, a lot of improvements. Uh, we just the, these young players for the Rockets, sophomores, freshmen, uh, juniors. Coach Paulson giving some great hands-on instruction down there on the sideline. Yeah, and, we've uh, had uh, we've had one caller uh, text and say, "Hey, how about the student body left, student body right?" Yeah, <laughs> let's let's try that. I'd say at this point, uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, we can do it on the kickoff, too. Let's let everybody uh, make a wall. Back deep for the Rockets is Breach. Going to be an end over end kick. Uh, Breach is going to get it. He's going to head upfield real quick. Going to be tackled real quick as well. He's going to be brought down at about the 37-yard line. 
Rockets will take over first and 10. The 7.27 to go here in the first half. 28 to nothing, your score. Bill Norris, I'm Bub Norris, bringing you Golden Rocket football right here on BNG Media. Again, not making any excuses, but we have lots of sophomores out there for the Rockets tonight. Johnny Scott, he's a sophomore. Michael Weber's a junior again tonight, or last last week was his first varsity experience. And we're going to take a timeout on the field right now. The Rockets are going to take a timeout. Then we're going to look at some of these other kids real quick. Again, number 77, he's a sophomore for the Rockets. Lambert boys, they're both sophomores. Collins boys, they're sophomores. So, again, the Rockets playing a lot of youth out here tonight against the veteran club of the Fairland Dragons. But uh, next week, uh, the Rockets um, will be playing the Minford Falcons, I believe. Yes, that is correct. And um, it'll be right here at C.H. Jones Field. And then the week after that, we go to Portsmouth West. So the Rockets will be back here next Friday night playing against me at Minford. And hopefully, Bill, they can just continue to improve and build on what they are uh, doing uh, tonight. First and 10 for the Rockets. Now, most of these folks that we talked about, a lot of young guys for Wilson that are on the field, most of these boys, if they have a little grit, a little uh, guts to them, uh, specialty teams is where they'll yes. usually end up. Rockets going to the eye formation. Takes a snap. Hands off to Kemp over the left side. Give him a gain of maybe one on the play. Just down the road tonight, Jackson uh, 14, Ironton 14. And if you uh, haven't seen those updates yet, um, Minford 20, Chesapeake 0. Here's another surprising score. Benton County 7, Rock Hill 7. I thought that might be a little bit more leaning toward the Vikings uh, direction. Oh, wow. Newark Catholic 35, Nelsonville zero goodness so surprising scores around uh, the area tonight johnny scott at shotgun with kemp uh, baby kemp to his background we're speaking with cole kemp the sophomore takes the snap hands off he's uh, hit in the backfield mm. nowhere to go number 70 um got right through there pretty quick bill uh gage goheen now when we talk about this surge that initial push like a like a track star when he pushes off of those uh, out of his stance they have got to get three to four yards in the other team's field before that man can make some yardage and uh, Fairland was right there at the line to meet him some other scores around the area Gallia Academy Blue Devils seven Athens zero Adina 20 Fairfield Christian seven here's a surpriser Portsmouth West 20 Portsmouth zero at this time Scott takes a shotgun uh, looking downfield, great looking athlete in the backfield. He's stringing it out, throws it, and he does a great job just throwing the ball away. Doing exactly what uh, he was coached to do. We spoke about that. Got outside the pocket, scrambled a bit, nowhere to go, and just throws it out of bounds. Yeah, if the play's not there, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Avoid the tackle, avoid the loss, just get rid of it. Brings up fourth down for the Rockets. Breach will be back in the punt formation with 5.51 to go in the half. Back deep for the Dragons, number 10. And uh, that's a Bryson Hunt. Hmm. Wonder what that little conversation was about with, with the kicker. Breach gets it away. Well, it wasn't, about, side. it wasn't about a fake, though, was it? I thought mm, it might have no, been. Probably not with still too much time left on the <laughs> clock at this point. <laughs> Again, uh, Rockets going on the field right now, number three, and that's Josh Clarkson. He's going in and uh, looks like he was going to play some uh, some defense. So we have a timeout on the field. I think it may be officials timeout for water. It's a little warm here this evening. 544 to go here in the half. Rockets trail 28 to nothing, but uh, Josh Clarkson, one of those freshmen, Bill, we spoke highly of earlier. He was making his way on uh, defensively to see if he stays in the game. Coach Polson have some uh, having some conversation with a couple of his veteran players down there. They've got to stay positive. 
Uh, I know the score doesn't show it, uh, but Wellston, there's been some, uh, uh, Fairland's had some big plays, but uh, Wellston has, has been pretty tough offensive and decent. They put some things together, I should say it that way. They put some good things together, and they're just not getting pushed around willy-nilly. Willy nilly? Willy nilly. Here, uh, Is that a player? Come see, come say, just oh, here okay. and there. Right. I got you. <laughs> Some of my uh, Southern Ohio vernacular. <laughs> 544 to go here in the half. Rockets trail 20 I could to use, nothing. I could use one of yours. Yeah. And I could say that Wellston is tougher than a $2 steak. There you go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson is shotgun for the Dragons. Takes the snap. Hands off for first back through number 27. He uh, does some weaving. And again, uh, Richardson on the bottom of the pile making a good tackle. Give him a gain of about four on the play. The other one, number 27, getting up off the bottom of the pile for the Rockets. Uh, do, 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 was it 27? That's 21. That's Thompson. Not bad that play. They got a little bit too much yardage. But uh, like I said, we need to get that surge. Be interesting to see, Bill, uh, with a, a week full of practice under Coach Polson just exactly what this team could do next week. It could be an interesting ball game. Jackson at shotgun for the Dragons. Takes a snap. First guy through. That's number 27. He has a load of steam. Reminds me of number 42 back in high school in 1982 and 83. Handed off to you. You're, yes. You do not go down on that first hit. Nope. You hit, you spin, you dig, you, the legs keep moving. And that's what that boy from Fairland is doing. Looks like we have a penalty on the play. Mm, I think they're going to call for a measurement, possibly. That's what they're doing. Five minutes to go here in the first half. Rockets trail 28 to nothing. Your score. Folks, if you have any of these sayings or southern ohio vernaculars isms. post them up isms yeah <laughs> post them up there on facebook uh, my dad was really good at some of these and uh one of his was you have to be tougher than a wit rock yeah and we didn't know what a wit rock was for a long time <laughs> <laughs> first and 10 for the dragons ball on their own 49 yard line 503 to go here in the half rockets trailing 28 to nothing your score Jackson at shotgun for the Dragons with a leap to his left and Kitts in the pistol formation. Takes a snap. Going to hand off the Kitts up the middle. A lot of running room again. Going to pick up uh, about 12 on the play. Again, uh, their, their line surge, as Bill, as you mentioned so often, their line surge is, is getting a great line surge, which gives their backs plenty of room to pick the hole. Anytime a back has room going up the middle, if he's got room or the time to sidestep a couple times, your defense isn't doing what it should do. And uh, up front for the Dragons is number 51, Braden Myers. He's only a freshman. Good night. That can't be correct. 4.30 to go in the half. Dragons taking their time. Take the snap. Going to throw out in the flats. It's complete. Quick hitter. He's in open field running. Gets it down to the 30-yard line. Going to be close to another Dragon first down. Going to mark it just short. Most of the time, if you want, if, if a freshman has the talent to be on the field, most of the time, if they let her, it's usually on specialty teams. Yes. We've got a boy out there that's uh, cracking he, heads. That uh, cannot be. He can. He has to be older than a freshman. That boy's built like a, a senior college guard. Jackson at shotgun again. Run us to his right and left. Drops back. Looks down. Looks down. Throws it down the right side. It is caught against Weber. Goes in the end zone. Touchdown for the Dragons. Again, not Michael Weber there He's in there. coverage. Again, just the youth part of that bill uh, stepped up again for the uh, the Rockets. Yeah. You end up uh, uh, chasing rather than uh, playing against and stopping. 20 or 34 to nothing. I'm not sure if the running clock takes effect. If they change that rule, 
in the first half. For sure, it will be the second half running clock. Uh, not sure if they will implement that. We'll find out here in just a moment. Snap is good. The kick is up. It appears to be good as well. 3.38 to go here in the half. Rockets now trail 34 to nothing against the Fairland Dragons. And, um, again, just inexperience uh, for our kids. Uh, he was there in coverage, had the right, right defense called. Kids just have to make plays. Again, you have a veteran player going up against a rookie player, and those things happen, folks. That's, that's just what it is. So the Rockets doing the best that they can with the card that they've been dealt and uh, just a result of that on the scoreboard tonight. Yeah, you, there is no exception for experience. If you have two men going up against each other, one is experienced and one is not, the experienced man will win most of the time. Nine times out of ten. Three thirty-eight to go here in the half. Rockets trail thirty-five to nothing. Your score. Again, uh, many many things, Bill. We've seen mostly emotionally, seen improvement tonight. Emotionally and confidence level, as you mentioned early on in the program tonight. Big difference for the Rockets tonight. It, it has been, and you can see it. They they are a different team than they were last week. Number 15 on the boot for the Dragons. That is Aiden Miller, another different kicker. So they've had three different kickers so far here tonight. Wellston's playing just a little bit farther back. They don't know what this boy will do. Little end over end kick. Uh, Clarkson going to take it at the 30, the freshman. He's trying to find his way up the field. He does. Again, runs the ball. Terrific. That's what I like to see. He got the ball, and he headed north and south. He didn't wait on folks. If you can give him a block, Great, do it. But if you're not, he's headed that way anyway. And you could see it. He wanted the ball. The ball was kicked over his head. He went and got it. He wanted the ball and see what he can do for it. So, again, first and 10 for the Rockets. Ball on their own 237-yard uh, line. 332 to go here in the half. Rockets trail 35 to nothing. Let's see what the Rockets uh, maybe be able to put together a package here on this series. Rockets are going to go twin receivers to the right. We have Weber and Breach wide to the right, Canner wide to the left. We have Kemp, uh, Baby Kemp to the left. Scott at shotgun, takes the snap. Going to throw it out into the flats. It's complete, complete to Breach. Breach breaks a couple tackles. Uh, gain of about four or five. Give him a gain of about five on the play. Bill, there's that quick hit play that we were talking about. Right, yeah, and it, and it took a while for Fairland's men to come over and actually make the tackle, which allowed that, that quick hit, allowed that to develop. Johnny Scott making an outstanding throw on that play, folks. Just not saying that. He had some zip behind that ball, put it right where it needed to be. Second down and five for the Rockets. Well executed play. Scott takes the snap. Looking across, throws it again. Beautiful spiral. First down for the Rockets. Kevin with the or Cantor with the reception on the far side. Fights it, gets it to midfield. First down for the Rockets. That took some effort. Well executed play, second effort after the catch. Got positive yardage, two plays in a row. Johnny Scott zipping the ball out in the flats again. Another sophomore dealt with the situation that he's been dealt with. Probably wouldn't be your starter this year, even though he's looking outstanding so far again here tonight. Even as a sophomore, no. He might be the, he might be the holder yeah. <laughs> for the kicker but because doing, he's got the good hands. Doing a great job here. It looks like he's played. Many snaps already. He's at shotgun. Takes the snap. Drops back three steps. Looking downfield, he's under pressure. He's going to have to dump it and get rid of it. He's get trying it, to son. run. Get Ooh, rid of it, son. You got Don't the take slide. the hit. You got the slide. He took that hit full force. And you know what? He showed some toughness on that play. He did. Uh, we don't advise taking that Connor hit. Connor Wood McWilliams uh, came up and put the stop. Yeah. Yeah, that was just whispered in my ear. That was a Jay Frizz play there. Jeremiah Frisbee, uh, take the slide, son, but he wanted to take the hit and try to deliver the hit instead. I think he might have been a linebacker that was converted to a quarterback. Maybe that was it. Well, Jeremy Scott, um, or, or John, Johnny Scott, showing a lot of, uh, lot of athleticism and skill quarterback for the Rockets tonight. Takes the snap, looks downfield, has his man, pulls it down. He's going to try to get upfield. Good He's cut. got uh, some nice yardage nice. again. 
What a play by he the knew, sophomore. He knew, either knew immediately that he didn't have any co uh, coverage or he saw the hole and took it. He moved the ball upfield. Rockets moving the ball here on this series. Third and uh, third about five. Right. Minute 15 to go in the half. Let's see if the Rockets try to pull something out of their hat. Third and five. Ball on the Fairland 46. Scott at shotgun. Blitz coming. Snap is good. Get rid of it, son. Here they come. He's got to get, get Oh, he spins get out. Rid of it. Oh, what a, what a play by the sophomore. Get down, son. Get down. Oh, come on. For the sake of the team, I know I know a kid doesn't like to go down or right. slide. Right. But for the sake of the team and what we have, the coach, no doubt, Coach Polson standing there talking to him, son, slide. Because we don't know the next man up, do we, from, from this man? Freshman. Yeah. Now, we noticed here that Fairland looks like there's a lot of clean jerseys out there, clean pants out there. They may have, with the score the way it is, they may have subbed in and put their uh, next unit in. Number nine in there, the defensive spot, Titus Brooks. He's a junior for Fairland at the left defensive end spot. That number 57 is all over the place. That's Ryan Dixon for Fairland. Scott, nope, going to go to Breach. Breach is hitting the backfield. Tries to get away from the guy, but uh, not happening. Michael Weber uh, mixing it up there just a bit with Christian Collins. I always like to see kids. Now, not don't get me wrong. I don't like kids to be fighting on the football field. But if a man comes up and, and it's gives on. you a shot, it's on. It's on. I remember uh, just a couple of years ago <laughs> uh, as a freshman, and we were playing Logan. I'll never forget the play. It was in the northeast corner about the four or five-yard line my freshman year. Played JV ball. Kid from Nelson, kid from Logan. Back then, we played Logan and all the big schools. Yeah. I was on the bottom of the pile. This was a varsity game. I got in late in the game. Drove his face mask into my shin bone. Well, the next thing he saw from me was a size 12 in his face mask. <laughs> Yellow flags flying everywhere. So <laughs> yeah, I remember Coach the said, what are you doing? I said, well, Coach, he, he drove his face mask in my shin. You can't be doing that. I, said, no, I, remember, I remember the bottom of the pile, and uh, anything goes down there, and getting pinched, uh, <laughs> pinched bit. All and uh, I remember coming out of there pretty quick, kicking and screaming, and the ref wanting to get on you, and I'm like, hey, uh, what, what do you want me to do? Yep, it was on then. Rockets turn it over on downs. First and 10 for the Dragons. 35 to nothing, your score. Uh, for sure, the second half, we will have a running clock. Uh, OHSEA rules, if it, once a team gets a 30-point lead, you have a running clock for the rest of the game. And I believe until that drops back under 30 points. So Jackson at shotgun for the Dragons. Takes a snap. Throws it out into the flats. Quick hitter, number 27. He has a lot of room up the sideline. They're trying to score again. I don't think anybody's going to catch him again. He's sprinting up the sideline. Going to give him a touchdown. Mm. Again, that was just speed and experience. Steeler leap. The senior. Um, again, just, just inexperienced by the Rockets, Bill. Uh, they had coverage. You could tell experienced players versus inexperienced players. And that went for a really large touchdown for the uh, Dragons. 41 he, to nothing, your score. He saw the opening around the corner, and when he uh, hit that corner, he saw daylight, and he took off. Took on, kicked in the afterburners. Again, we want to encourage as many people as they can to come out and support these young, young, these young men and, and band uh, due to the uh, things that they have faced that's the first extra point missed on the night. 41 to nothing, your score. That young, that young man, he's got it together. He missed that. But if you would have seen, uh, if you, those of you sitting at home looking, you saw that ball. It took off like a rocket. It didn't, wasn't a blooper. He kicked that with some authority. Now he missed. But if he gets that lined up, he'll be kicking 30 and 40 yarders. 
24 seconds remaining here in the half. The Golden Rockets uh, trail the Fairland Dragons. We appreciate everybody tuning in uh, listening to us tonight. Once again, if you are watching from home, leave a comment. Tell us what you think. We've, uh, well, we've, <laughs> we haven't mentioned a whole lot about BMG Media, but uh, shout out goes to them for putting on these uh, games or, or telecasting these games. And uh, we get the job of, I guess, maybe having the, the fun or the experience to call them. We just we get to talk. And that, that's the easy part. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the armchair quarterbacks. We are ready to get action back underway. 24 seconds remaining here in the half. Rockets trailing 41 to nothing. Your score. Number 15 on the kick again for the Dragons. The kick is up. It's a end of ring kick. Going to bounce. Number six takes it for the Rockets. Trying to get his weavy's way up through. Gets outside. Still on his feet. Brings it out to about the 30. Five-yard line, and that is uh, Jarrett Meacham on the return for the Rockets. Now, we have talked uh, before, perhaps not on the air, but in uh, personal conversations. Wellston has always been able to have talent, put talent on the field. But sometimes, I tell you what, the, the circumstances that surround the team takes a toll. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we've had coaches... Uh, health issues. We've had players' health issues, and uh, it comes down to next man up. And the next man up is usually younger because they're in more in, inexperienced. First and ten for the Rockets. Scott Schill shotgun with Kemp, Cole Kemp behind him. Breach to the right. Takes a snap. Scott's going to keep it. Tries to get outside. Picks a couple uh, spots. Stays on his feet. A gain of maybe one on the play. That's going to do it for the first half of action here tonight at C.H. Jones Field. It's the Fairland Dragons 41, the Ralston Golden Rockets 0, but much, much improved from last Friday night, even though the score does not indicate that. Kids are playing it all and leaving it all on the field. So it, it is halftime. We're going to take a break here. Again, you're listening to Golden Rocket Football here on BMG Media, and we'll be back in just a bit.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the Golden Rock Marching Band to perform their 2022 Woo! field show entitled Her Majesty. Led by Field Commanders Hannah Padragovich and Emma McGowan. The band is under the direction of Mrs. Emily Talley, Assistants Catherine McCall Smith, Brian Bethel, Jackie Hildebrand, Danny Cox, and Casey Bethel. Selections include Zadik the Priest by Handel, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, and XYs from the Musical Six. Please welcome to the field your Wellston Golden Rocket Marching Band!
Just a reminder, you still have time to get some food at both concession stands. The Wellston Golden Rocket Athletic Boosters concession stand here at the north end of the home seating. And the Wellston Band Boosters concession stand at the south end of the stadium. We would also like to thank again Adina for providing our athletic trainer this evening. We'd also like to thank the Wellston Fire Department, Jackson County EMLs, and the Wellston Police Department for their services tonight. Good job. Yeah. Girl, no, I Welcome back, sports fans, to Wellston C.H. Jones Field. Wellston High School football. Bill Norris on Bub Norris uh, bringing you your action tonight. Bill, the Rockets trailing 41 to nothing at half, but uh, again, we, this was kind of expected. Uh, Fairland being a really, really good team, one of the better teams in the Southeast District, and the Rockets uh, going through all types of adversity, as we mentioned in the pregame, uh, but a lot of good things we've seen since. Uh, just a lot of progress, positive things happening so far. Right. And you don't want to take, I guess you do want to take the high road and be the good sport. Uh, Wilson's getting it handed to him tonight. But taking the high road, what a great improvement from last week. Absolutely. And so, and we're seeing this out on the field. You're seeing the confidence. You're seeing plays uh, develop. You're seeing plays getting executed properly. Mm -hmm. And then the what we talked uh, at halftime, there are some things you cannot uh, oh. overcome. Yeah. Uh, when your opponent is more experienced than you, when your opponent is bigger, stronger, and more experienced than you, it's hard to overcome those things. Again, not making excuses. We're just, not at we're all. We're just speaking of the fact of the matter. That's, what, that's what's going on. The Rockets playing uh, a number of sophomores. Uh, out there tonight again normally that would be playing on the JV team but they are starting tonight mentioned many many times 
next man up. So right. uh, that's when, what we're seeing tonight. When uh, Fairland had the clean jerseys in, is what I call them, usually the second team when you see the clean jerseys come in, when they were in the right at the end of the second half, Wellston was moving the ball. So you had like players on the field. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. And then, so Wellston starts moving the ball, and Fairland puts their big hosses back in and put a stop to it and then went down and scored one more time. And uh, as a result, 41 to nothing, your score. Rockets trailing. Uh, again, we want to encourage everyone, next Friday night, the Rockets will be back home. They're here to play the Menford Falcons. We want to encourage as many people as possible to come out and uh, fill the stands, support these kids. They've been handed a really, really bad deck of cards here uh, the last couple of months. But you got to tip your hat to these kids that came out knowing what the season potentially could be like and have come out, stuck it out, 28 kids uh, on the roster and um, making improvements each right. week, each right. step of the way. Uh, and, and probably as uh, many of the teams that we've been on, just not having enough experience to put a full line together for practice. So you take the left side mm -hmm. of the line mm -hmm. and make them play defense while you run plays to the right side of the line. Yes. So that they have top-notch players going against top-notch players rather than putting all the freshmen on the other side of the ball and running against them and crushing them every time. 2.30 away from the second half action. Again, there will be running clock second half. The OHSAA rules guidelines tells you once a, your opponent gets up on you 30 points, um, we have a running clock situation. So we'll see that here the second half. Um, and some of the, the bright spots. Let's take a look at some of the bright spots for the Rockets. Defensively tonight, number 58, the guy in the middle at linebacker spot. I've just done an amazing job, I thought, so far, Brennan Tabor. Right, yeah. He's, he's, there have been highlights, again, like last week. Uh, one or two plays here and there. Tonight we're getting more of those kind of plays put together. And as each game or the season progresses, we'll see more of that. And on the other side of the ball offensively, a lot of bright spots. Um, Johnny Scott has, I thought, just played really, really well for a sophomore. Very poised at quarterback, and scrambles very well, throws the ball very well, and uh, got to teach him. we got teach him. Got to teach him the slot. <laughs> got to teach him the old, the old base slot. And I'm hoping to see uh, the Kemp boys, both of them, in there at the same time. And that'll be probably a couple weeks away because you know, the old, older brother of Kemp, number 44, Bodie Kemp, he's a senior. Uh, he, he's out tonight. Not sure when we will get him back. But, uh, yes, you're right, Bill. If we get both those boys on, on the field, one brother, 44, will just soon run over you like he used to. And the other one says, eh, I'm going to out finesse you, uh, older brother, just a little bit. Well, so. I'll tell you what. There's just something when, when uh, you're in the backfield with your brother <laughs> and someone takes a cheap shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That it's, on. Get, it's on. That's another time it's on. Yep. And so you look out for that fellow that put the cheap shot, and, and uh, he's, he's a marked man. He's right? a mark. He might as well put a big bullseye on his back. <laughs> because if you're running the football and he's over there, you make, you might take a few steps toward you, him rather you, than hit the open hole. Exactly. Hey, by the way, Brett Gray, if you're listening tonight, uh, I have a hat on, so you can't pick on me about my hair. <laughs> <laughs> giving it up again for bmg media sure, putting on this uh broadcast tonight uh if you know or would like to be a part of this uh give bmg media a call contact them on facebook if you like uh, as you see them make comments uh, if you'd like to be a sponsor uh give them a call contact them through facebook uh, or the contact information they have there on the website Michael Weber on the kick for the Rockets as we get ready to get second half action underway. The Dragons leaving uh, many of their starters in, I think, the receiver-wise. Correction, they have a lot of new jerseys in there as well. Have, have a, few, a few players still in the game, starters, but uh, we're ready to roll. Usually the folks that handle the ball, they'll leave them in there, and then everybody else is going to have a clean jersey. Michael Weber with an end over end kick. Going to be a short kick, hits the 30. And the Dragons are going to down it at about the 29. So first and 10 for the Dragons. Just getting a second half action underway. Anticipate running clock here for the Rockets. Rockets trail 41 to nothing, your score. 
and um, expect a quick second half with the running clock. And uh, we see a whole new unit out there for Fairland. Uh, looks like possibly their their uh, JV squad. And, that uh, looks like it, yeah. Yes. A new quarterback in the game for the Dragons. Number eight. And that is uh, Eli Pine. He's a freshman. He takes a snap. I'm going to throw out the flats. It's complete. Not afraid to throw, is he? Yep. Pit first and uh, first and ten for the uh, Dragons. Complete to number five on the play. That's complete to C.J. Graham. He's a sophomore for the Dragons. Pine just squared up and uh, let it go. So it looks like maybe the Dragons will be playing the JV team uh, the second half. Now, folks, don't don't think that we're down on the Rockets. We are anything but. The Rockets need experience. Uh, they've took some hard blows uh, with uh, boys on the team, coaches, and those kind of things, and it takes a while to recover. Fairland at shotgun, going twins receivers to the left and right. Takes the snap, hands off to the first back through. He's going to be hit in the backfield and stopped. There we go with an uh, open field tackle. Good nice job, field Rockets. Tackle by number three, and that's the freshman, Josh Clarkson, for the Rockets. <laughs> yeah, He's we, fired up a little bit. Well, we've, we've called this young man's name out a couple times already tonight, and um, he's one of those kids that, hey, I'll do it. I'll jump in there. And uh, he's going to be a very similar type player. I think by the time his high school career is over, he is going to be a very similar type player as a Thomas Mays. By the time it's said and done, this young man, you're going to see him a lot. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. They need to change the marker. That shotgun for the Dragons. Takes a snap, hands off. Nope, going to try to get around the right side. He's going to throw it out in the flats. And again, Bill, you can see, <laughs> it's quite obvious. If you put the same age players, we have the same age as players out there. It's night and day difference. Yeah. When you when you match up likeness and likeness, uh, Wellston will hold their own. And as you can see, if you're watching, uh, third down and 10. Third and 10 for the Dragons, 9.39 to go in this one. Third quarter, rather. Uh, they're ringing the bell. I don't know if that's for the wrecking crew over there, if it's their lunchtime or what. Third and long. Number eight at shotgun. Again, that's the freshman, Eli Pine, for the Dragons. To his right, number 24. And that is Parker Wyatt. Takes a snap, looks down the field, has plenty of time to throw. He's going to unleash. He laid that one up. And it's caught. And it's caught. I'll give him credit. Number 17, who we got there? Connor Black, another freshman. Uh, quarterback laid up a big, what would we call it, a big goose egg, we'd call those? I guess, yeah. And uh, give a credit, give uh, number 17 credit. He he went up and pulled it down. Wellston Rock is not much of a push on the defensive line to get into the backfield. So the Rockets still have their starters uh, starting unit in there with a couple of adjustments. You have uh, Josh Clarkson out there at that one corner spot. Uh, number eight out there again, uh, Seth Lambert. He's a sophomore. Takes the snap, hands to number 24 around the right side, trying to get the corner and does not. Wellston did a good job of pursuing the ball runner and he just ran out of turf. Again, that was Parker Wyatt the carry the, on the carry and he's a senior uh, for the uh, for the Dragons. No gain on the play. Rockets had him backed up and they took the big pass. Second down and 10 for the Dragons. Eli Pine at quarterback. He's a freshman for the Dragons. Drops it back to pass, throws it down, downfield, and it's caught and touchdown. What? Oh, we have a flag. I imagine that's going to be uh, roughing the passer. We'll see the official call here in just a moment. That young man looks like he's got a pretty good arm. He uh, heaved at 30, 40 yards. Waiting for the official Signal hit the man on stride. 
It appears that it's going to be still waiting for the signal. Looks like they're lining up for an extra point. They're going to take that on the kickoff. Roughing the passer is the call. 7.33 left in the third quarter. Touchdown was good, so that makes it uh, 47. Now, if you're watching, this number 15 was the, I told you about him late in the second quarter. Puts a little punch on it. I think he missed it again, but he had the punch and the drive on that. If he works that out, that young man will be a good kicker. 7.33 to go in the third quarter. 47 to nothing your score. In favor of the Fairland Dragons. Rockets will get the ball next. And uh, see what uh, see what we can put together here. But we, we do have a score update for you uh, in Vinton County. It's Rock Hill 7, Vinton County 7 still. Uh, Jackson 26, Ireton 14. Yeah, still in the fourth quarter, it's 7-7. Seven to seven. That's a surprising score uh, from Vinton County. Newark Catholic 35, Nelsonville 0. Portsmouth West 26, Portsmouth 0. Adina 20, Fairfield Christian 7. Union Oda 21, Amanda Clear Creek 0. Gallia Academy 20, Athens 7. Taze Valley 7, Logan 7. Alexander and South Point all tied up at 0. Minford 27 and Chesapeake 7. Penalty would be, was, is being assessed on the kickoff from the roughing the passer. So it starts out at the 45. Kick's going to be, just let it roll in the end zone, son. Nope, we're going to take it at the 5. Breach is trying to pick his uh, hole. And, uh, again, we just like to see him. Uh, he tries to break it and brings it out to the 30-yard line. But, but his the, the approach on that is much different than what we're accustomed to. Right. When you catch <laughs> that ball, you, it is, you head up the field. You go north and south, and if something opens up, you take it. If it doesn't open up, you make the hole. You put your head down, and you go. Let's see what the Rockets come out with now. Looks like they're going to stay with their original lineup. Again, Fairland having looks like and appears to be their uh, JV team on the field at this time. Of course, the Rockets uh, pretty much have a, a JV team that plays all the time anyway. Right. <laughs> And, well, and it's sure. not the only time you would pull these boys out is if you were afraid they're getting hurt because they need all the experience they can get under the lights. I'm sure they'll be filtering players in uh, throughout the course of the rest of the second half. 7.01 to go here in the third quarter. Johnny Scott under center takes the snap, hands off the second back through. There goes Kemp. See you up man on man. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's baby Kemp over the that left side. That is it. He saw daylight. He took off. And there was no stopping him until he got tripped up about 15 yards downfield. Again, Bill, let's make note uh, when you have JV put team against JV team, Rockets doing very, very well. They're doing a great job moving the ball. I think we've got a cramp. Those are awful. I'm telling you, I don't know if there's any worse pain in the world than uh, having a cramp. Been there, done that, and that is not fun. And there's nothing you can do to relieve the pain until it just leaves. <laughs> and a lot of times it creeps up on you completely unexpected right in the middle of the game. Of course, now that we're older, they hit you when you're laying in bed in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Ever so true. Six thirty-nine in the third quarter. Time's moving is stopped for the injury. And to let folks get a, boys get a sip of water. Again, Logan seven, Taze Valley seven, South Point now 12, Alexander zero, uh, men for 27, Chesapeake seven. Zane Trace, uh, Coach Heath Hinton, who is now the head coach at Zane Trace, uh, it's 40, Madison Plains, zero. Here's an interesting score. Previous Wellston uh, player and athlete, 
Sean Bishers, West Jefferson Rough Riders, 35, Paint Valley, 12. Another interesting score, uh, Waverly, 18, Johnstown, uh, 22. Huntington, uh, the Huntington Huntsman from Chillicothe, 14, Eastern Beaver, 7. River Valley, 28, South Gallia, 0. The number seven for the Rockets coming off the field. That's Evan Canner, the old uh, cramp in the calf. Gets you every time. Made a great catch there in the first half. Looking for more great things to come from him in the future. Again, he's a junior. He has another year for the Rockets. Coach Polson signaling the plays in from the sidelines. Johnny Scott still in there at quarterback. That shotgun takes the snap, looks out in the flats, throws it to complete the uh, mm. breach in and out of his hands. Didn't quite look that one in. No, he started to run, and just as soon as he took off to run, the ball popped out of his hands. Second down and 10. Now, I was never the receiver type, but um, you hear that at the high school level, at the college level, and at the pro level. Catch it first. I always loved playing tight end in high school. Absolutely loved it uh, when we when we moved there to, for the benefit of the team and getting to, just to be more uh, together under center. Drops it back, throws it out in the flats, passes incomplete. But that's a that's a back pass, and uh, yeah, they're going to call that incomplete. But that was really a backward pass. So it was eligible for the other team to pick Absolutely. up and run. Absolutely. So the, rock, the the official calls it incomplete. So I wonder if that might have been one of those plays he'd just soon call call it as an incomplete pass and, and the keep the deal. clock. Yeah. Keep Absolutely. the clock rolling. Yeah, sure. No no harm, no foul. It's called preventative game management <laughs> for an official. Yep. It really didn't matter either way. The ball still got dropped, and nobody, the other team didn't pick it up, so no harm. Third and 10 for the Rockets, 442 to go in the third. 47 to nothing, your score. Scott at shotgun, takes the snap, looks downfield. He's under pressure, steps up in the pocket. Under pressure again, going to his right. Boom! Good night, Welcome Irene. Welcome to the and, turf. And that one's coming back. They're going to call. And we know why. A legal block on a defensive player. Folks, if you're at home, they used to call those crackback blocks. And I've experienced those. And uh, there's nothing like uh, 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 a linebacker like myself running the, to the sideline, and then the man that's all the way out there yep. by the sideline, he yep. comes back in on you. Yep. And it looks impressive. Really does. And, of course, the guy that gets hit is uh, looks really embarrassed because well, they he called he, helmet he to helmet contact, Bill, on that to interrupt you just a moment. Yeah. They called helmet to helmet on that. I didn't see helmet to helmet, but um, mm. yeah. I think that he, as it may. I thought he was down, and he, uh, he unloaded on him. I thought he was below his helmet. That's going to march us back 15 yards with 4.15 to go in the third quarter. Well, the young man that received the blow, um, he'll be a little bit sore in the morning when he rolls out of bed. Yeah, he'll have to get the cobwebs out. <laughs> Scott at shotgun again. They're going to bring the bring everybody. Scott looking down the field, looking down the field. He's going to unleash he unloaded. What a throw. What a throw. Intercepted, though. Intercepted at the 43-yard line. Yeah, the uh, Fairland Dragons jumped up. He really went up and went after that one and brought it down. Scott just unleashing it, which why not? Just unhurl it. He tossed that thing about 40, 45 yards in the air. And hoped his man could make the play, yep. and it just didn't turn out that now, way. A couple years ago, Bill, Rockets had the type of players that just go up and get that. Right. And, and that's what made them so successful in right. their playoff run. Um, again, just learning, learning curves here for the Rockets. The... Uh, Dragons will take back over on the interception. 326 to go in the third quarter, trailing 47 to nothing. Yep. 
Number Looks 52 in the game for the Rockets right now, and that's uh, Devin Barnhill. He's another freshman. Looks like the Wellston Rockets are going to start substituting now uh, occasionally. 52, 54. Uh, Hunter Collins, another sophomore. Number 58 still in there. That's Tabor. It's always good when you can get the younger guys a little experience. Movement everywhere, and we have a flag on the play. And a nice, nice uh, game tackle that time by the Rockets on the play. Boy, it was a, uh, you could see that play developing when that mm -hmm. quarterback come around the corner. And that boy receiver wasn't going to get the ball, and he yeah. saw the quarterback take yep. off running. So he yep. went to support the quarterback, <laughs> and boy, he just unloaded. Oh, yeah. Five-yard penalty on the play. 2.36 to go here in the third. Rockets trailing 47 to nothing. Now, folks, if you're watching, if you see some confusion, looks like there's a little confusion about who should be out there right now. When they start substituting in the younger players, uh, things like this will happen. Pine it, shotgun. Oh, fumble on the play. Boom. Oh, missed an opportunity. Mm. <laughs> I thought he's going mm, I did, too. <laughs> You were getting ready to call Ooh. it. It was Ooh. there for the call. Ooh. Again, you're, you're seeing two teams now that are very evenly matched, age-wise, size-wise, experience-wise. Minute 52 left on the third quarter clock. Again, we want to encourage everybody to come out next Friday night and support the Rockets. Uh, just get behind these kids. And really support them. Um, new coaching staff, new coach, head coach now, um, and uh, they just need all the support that our community can give them. We've always been a great community that's pulled together in adversity and helped people out. We'd certainly love to pack these stands again next Friday night. Nice play. Didn't get anywhere, but it is a nice play. Nice executed. The quarterback got rid of the football. Man caught it. Just didn't get anywhere with it. Brings up third down for the Dragons. Minute Expect left. to see Bill possibly the fourth quarter of your other your other starters. Uh, I'd say your other your other three seniors that's out there now. Everybody else is a freshman and sophomores for the Rockets that are out there. Right. They're just I, trying to. I think Wilson's just trying to do a little containment right now yeah. to keep that score as low as they can, and then uh, next quarter. Turn your young guys loose. Get them at under the lights. Friday night lights experience. Pilot shotgun for the. Oh, that snap goes right by him. He wasn't looking. And uh, the Rockets. Uh, we have. A, we do have another flag on the play. Not sure. I don't know if he was calling an audible, but he was looking at his uh, uh, running back beside him, and then the ball goes whizzing by his head. We understand Rock Hill just scored. We'll try to get that score for you uh, with a minute or so to go in the game in Vinton County. Uh, been, would have been at least 13 to seven late in the fourth quarter. I haven't had any updates yet on the uh, score stream, but um, just received word that uh, Rock Hill did score. So it's a Newark Catholic 38, Nelsonville still zero. But again, uh, we want to encourage everybody to come out next Friday night again to come out and support these young men uh, with all the diversity and things that's been going on around the football program the last couple of months. Uh, let's just let's get behind them like we do as a community and everything that we do. Come out and support these kids. Let's let's pack these stands and uh, win win or lose or draw. Let's get here and support these kids and get behind them. Uh, the coaching staff. You know, everybody, Bill, could, could jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, this and do that and, and just be so negative about everything. Right. And we've mentioned many, many, many times before, it's about the kids. That's right. why we're here. That's why we're announcing this game. It is all about the kids, and that's what we want to do. Come out, and support, come out and support your community. Support these boys. They go through a lot, practices, weightlifting, school, and they come out because they love cracking heads. You know, you have 20, 28 men on the roster. And uh, as you can already see, Coach Polson has yet to have these kids to coach them at all. 
He just took over yesterday. Right. So I'm, it's going to be interesting to see with Coach Paulson, Paulson at the helm for one week to see what, what kind of we will do. Yeah. What, what kind of improvements will we continue to see next week? I expect to continue to see improvements next week. Wellston has been taking a little bit more, a few more chances on the passing. Um, got a few more completions this week. Against a really, really good Fairland football team, folks. So again, take no, take nothing away from Fairland. They're a good football team. Uh-oh. It's blocked. Richardson. And the Rockets. Ball is still loose. Recovered by Fairland at the... 16-yard line, I believe. Rockets Great will take over. effort on the part of Wellston Rockets to block that punt. Again, it's JV team. Uh, well, the Rockets still do have, looks like, maybe three starters on the field up front. Um, Rockets are going to try to score, obviously. Now, folks, if you're watching at home, if you look up in the corner, I believe we've got them, uh, you'll see the, a list of sponsors. Uh, if you are watching and you can support these folks, please do. Clock running, fourth quarter action. Folks are starting to come alive here in the stadium. Got some positive things happen for the Rockets. Johnny Scott takes a snap, looks downfield, looks in the end zone. He throws it to the corner of the end zone. Gets can caught. he get it? Out of the back of the end zone. Boy, he went up for that one. But breach. He came down with it. Just Folks, outside the end zone. I'm just going to say this. Johnny Scott looked like Jeremiah Frisbee rolling to his left and zipping that thing in the corner of the end zone. Uh, on a rope. On a rope. And uh, the Jay Frizz used to do that all the time. And Breach uh, doing a great job, too, going up and getting a second and ten. Ball on the 16-yard line. Oh, they're going to pass again. Going to do, do, do a post in the center. Let's see if we run a post route. Boom. There he goes. Get it to him. He's got to run it. Get up. Past the line of scrimmage. Again, Johnny Scott showing some, um, some amazing athleticism, Bill, uh, here tonight. But it's these two plays that they just ran shows us that they have improved from last week. Last week, they would not have tried this. You're looking at a different offensive set as well. We're going to spread offense tonight where last week we were power eye situation. And they're more, much more, seem to be much more comfortable running this offense than the one last week. It's the offense they've ran the last three years in a row under Coach Mike Smith. Johnny Scott, shotgun. Baby Kemp going to bump over to his right. Rockets going to take a timeout, wisely so. 9.34 to go here. Looks Again, like there was a little bit of confusion right there, and so the coach calls the time. We're going to try to get some updated scores for you here real quick. Rock Hill, 14. Vinton County 7. That's a shocker. That is uh, a shocker. Uh, uh, what we have talked over the last couple weeks is that everyone seems to expect Vinton County to have a powerhouse and just doesn't quite seem to be fitting together and gelling together. So far, it just hasn't happened. Union Oda 42 of Andy Clear Creek 0. Portsmouth West 34, Portsmouth 7. Uh, Gallia Academy 32, Athens 7. Minford 41, Chesapeake 7. Alexander 0, South Point 20. Zane Trace 40, Madison Plains 0. Newark Catholic 45, Nelsonville 0. That was another surprising score. All right, so Wellston took a timeout because it looked like there was a little confusion. I hope they've got things worked out. They look like they are ready to score. Well, I also like how Coach Polson's just put the ball in these kids' hands to run the offense from last year. And it's amazing that these kids remember it. Scott trying to get outside, look in the corner, throws at the end zone, incomplete. I think the Fairland man got his hand on it. Johnny uh, probably could have tucked it right there. We've said, now we've got to know the difference. And right. again, that's just uh, experience. experience will come. Absolutely. Uh, he had a lot of real estate in front of him. Probably could have ran that and picked up a first down, maybe even a touchdown, but he'll learn that uh, as, his, as he goes through the career, his career, he'll learn that to uh, Tuck that thing. We have a flag on the play. Folks, once again, we'd like to thank BMG Media.
for putting on this broadcast. Uh, if you'd like to support them or become a sponsor or support the sponsors, please do so. Look up in the right-hand corner and you'll see all of the sponsors. Flag goes against the Dragons. Just had another update. Benton County is in the red zone. Eight seconds to go, trailing by seven. Johnny Scott at shotgun with Cole Kemp behind him. Moves him to his right side. I still like the name Baby Kemp. Mm, that one's going easy. He gets outside. Broken play. Johnny Scott trying to stay on his feet and does. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Stays in bounds with 8.05 to go in the contest. Rockets certainly in four-down territory here, Bill. If I would, uh, I would almost even try a kick just because you could or you if you can. Well, here, and that's a good point. Um, probably something to consider. Here's what I'm doing if I'm the offensive coordinator for the Rockets. I'm going to I'm going to my wide receiver number 22. I'm going to put it in Breach's hands, Brenton Breach. I'm going to have him. Uh, of course, they're stacking the center of the field on us. So I'm going to do a five yard down and out man on man coverage and see if right Scott can get it to him in the corner of the end zone. Let's yeah. see what happens. So you're lining up Breach on the inside on the hash. Mm -hmm. Give him plenty to work room to work in the corner of the end zone. And Let's just lay it up have. for him so the man can make a play. See if we get it to him. Oh, going to bootleg back the other way. He's going to pick up the first get down. In there. Scott. Yes. Going to get in the end zone for the Rockets. Well, folks, that was a trick play of sorts. You have your man who is your main receiver and you uh, uh, get him away from where the play is going to go. And he ran around the corner and there was uh, what a there tremendous was no stopping. Play. He, he took off and it was he was gone. Again, you have likeness, as you mentioned. Teams of like talent playing against each other now and Rockets doing very well. Uh, had me even full. I, I anticipate going to breach in the corner of the end zone. Coach Polson says, man, let's do a bootleg and bootleg yeah. him the other way. I imagine Fairland was kind of looking for for him also in the corner. Weber on the kick, the extra point for the Rockets. Snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is also nice good. Nice kick. Nice kick. Rockets score their first touchdown of the year. So we get a little, little excitement here at C.H. Jones, Jones Field because the Rockets are putting points on the board. Fairland fans uh, may not be too excited about us scoring a touchdown, but hey, we have a lot to cheer about. <laughs> that is a moral victory for all of the Absolutely. things that the young men have had to go through this year so far. 7-10 to go in the contest. Rockets trail 47-7, your score. Still running clock situation, but uh, great, uh, great, great series there that time. And, and I can't say enough about the athleticism and the playmaking ability of Johnny Scott, at quarterback for the Rockets, being a sophomore. And then you put Kemp beside him, another sophomore. Uh, and you, you go to your whiteouts. You have Canner, who I believe is a uh, – you have McWilliams, who's a, who's a junior. You have Evan Canner, who is a junior. So freshman, junior, sophomores out there for the Rockets right now. And then uh, Seth Lambert, a sophomore. Uh, the other Lambert brother, Bryce Lambert, number 60, sophomore. So the Rockets loaded with sophomores. You're basically playing, stacking a JV football team out here versus uh, a varsity team. Right, But right. Um, Rockets, you can just see them, Bill, throughout the course of this game have executed better and have gotten better throughout the course of this game and felt much more comfortable with this offense. You know, at, at one time preseason, uh, we had talked and uh, – we didn't know how this team was going to work out. We knew they were young. We knew that, that they had faced adversity. And uh, they have faced those challenges. Kick is off. Short kick. Going to be taken at the 30. And we got two, three, four people on the tackle. And uh, Seth Lambert showing some uh, nice uh, aggression. On the far side. Folks, when we <laughs> these boys get fired up, good things happen. And a lot of, uh, a lot of, a couple more new uh, green jerseys, clean jerseys, Bill. Hey, another update for us, uh, Rock Hill 14, Benton County 13. Um, haven't seen that. Uh, that that's going to be a final here pretty quick, I am sure. 6.33 left in the game. Rockets lining up on defense. Just had an update again going to overtime uh, at Venton County.
Now, folks, the reason we bring Vinton County into the talk so much is because Vinton County has become a rivalry of well with Wellston. Takes a snap as Pine fumbled on the play, and uh, he recovers his own snap. And again, that's uh, the freshman Eli Pine for the Dragons. 5.54 to go in the ball game. 47 to 7, your score. Again, many, uh, many improvements. A lot of positive things, Bill, to talk about for the Rockets. Number two, Roger Woods in the game. Another freshman for the Rockets. Uh, number seven comes out, Evan Canner. He's a junior. Uh, 37 out there for the Rockets. Again, that's Cole Kemp. Number 60 out there. Again, that's Bryce Lambert, another sophomore. So all your starters now out with the entire JV team out there for the Rockets. Pine takes a snap. Again, some confusion for the Dragons. And um, it, lo it, it looked as if the quarterback, who's the freshman, didn't quite know. He thought maybe he needed to keep it, or mm -hmm. then he didn't know if he should hand it off and slowed things down enough for the Rockets to uh, stop that runner. Third and 11 for the Dragons, 4.50 to go in the contest. Isaac McWilliams, a junior out there for the Rockets. Number 54 out there as well. That's Hunter Collins for the Rockets. He's a sophomore. He's a linebacker. Again, you're going to see and hear a lot from these kids as uh, they continue to grow up through the Rocket system. Third and 11. Pine takes the snap, drops back three steps, looks across the middle under heavy pressure. He, he launches it, it down the center of the field. Intercepted! Intercepted. Intercepted in Rocket territory at the 39-yard line. That looked a lot like one of the other passes he threw when I said he laid up a big goose egg. He laid up a big goose egg, and the Rockets brought it down. Another sophomore, number 23, Mason Collins. The brothers out there for the Rockets on the big interception. Let's see if the Rockets can tag another one on the board here with 421 to go. We still have the student section, the uh, wrecking crew, or they look like the wrecking crew tonight. Looked like construction workers. They're all still here, and they're cheering. Uh, let's see if the Rockets keep Johnny Scott in the game at quarterback. Might be a good opportunity. We know the game's out of control, out of hand score-wise. Let's see if uh, Jackson gets in there at the quarterback spot for the Rockets. Rockets going to burn a timeout right here, rightfully so, to regather the troops. 421 to go in this one. 47 to 7, your score, Rockets trail. Again, we want to encourage everybody to uh, come out next Friday night uh, to support these kids to fill it to uh, the bleachers tonight great crowd on hand uh, for, yeah, for everything that's going through Friday night under the lights folks Rock Hill 14 Benton County 14 I guess there was a controversial play at the end of the game bill on that Benton County had 12 kids on the field when they kicked the extra point and it was not caught so I guess there's some controversy from what we understand Portsmouth West 34 Portsmouth 7 Adina 33, Fairfield Christian 7. Union Oda 42 to nothing over Amanda Clear Creek. Again, Union Oda must obviously be the real deal. Gallia Academy, Academy 32, Athens 7. Fairland, obviously that's us. Uh, South Point 20, Alexander 6. Folks, again, we give a shout out to BMG Media for broadcasting. If you're at home watching on Facebook or streaming, uh, leave a comment. Uh, leave a comment for your sponsors. And if you'd like to become a sponsor, get a hold of BMG Media. Brett Gray, and yes, I can tell you it's hot in this press box and my hair is a mess. You'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> Rockets take over. 4.18 to go, clock running. Jackson under center now for the Rockets. The freshman hands off to number 20 over the right side for the Rockets. That's uh, Connor McWilliams, another sophomore. So the Rockets getting uh, several uh, new players in the game. Might have been Coach a little. Coach satisfied Bill with tagging one touchdown up on the board, trying to get everybody in the game at this point. Maybe a little confusion right there. Of course, you've got new players in. A little confusion in the backfield on the handoff. Jackson running over to get the uh, play from the sidelines. 3.45 to go in this one. Again, the Rockets will be home next Friday night right here against Menford. Menford was winning fairly handily. Uh, over Chesapeake, 41 to seven was that final. Rockets will be hosting Fairland here next week 
next Friday night right here at C.H. Jones Field. Rockets going to go with the spread offense still, which is new to this freshman class. Jackson, a shotgun snap goes over his head. Rockets just going to have to fall on it, and they do. And a whole host of uh, white jerseys out there. Now, folks, these are some of the things we we don't expect, but they do happen when you get a new crew in there. Uh, folks just haven't played together for long for a long period of time, and it takes some time to get everybody acquainted, used to each other, know how each other's playing. And so you'll get mix-ups like this, uh, a bad snap, a bad handoff. Vinton County, Bill, we understand, scored first in overtime. Missed the extra point. Now, um, we believe um, Rock Hill has the ball in the red zone as well. We'll try to get you an update on that one. Keep you posted. 2.20 to go in this one. 47 to 7, your score. Jackson under center. Takes a snap, hands off to his first back through. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Not much happening there. The guinea squad for both teams, as we would call it. <laughs> or, or if we go back even a little farther, we used to call them the F Troop. Uh, mm. Many of you don't know back in the way back in the day, they used to have a program on called the F Troop. They were just kind of some of the soldiers uh, that just weren't up to snuff. <laughs> Jackson in the game uh, for the Rockets at quarterback. Justin, he's a freshman. Looks like he's running a little gimpy on his ankle. Not sure if he got hurt earlier, but uh, he's out there taking some snaps anyway. Minute 20 to go. There he is. Hmm. Wellston tries to throw the ball, gets the ball there, and the defender pushes the receiver out of the way. A minute to go. Again, uh, Bill, let's uh, just recap real quick before we go off the air tonight. Uh, much improved Wellston football team, uh, just the just morale, morale. Again, we want to uh, pick an Adina player of the game. We'll get that for you here just shortly. Jackson takes a snap. Rolls throws it out in the flats. Has a man. It's uh, almost intercepted. I tell you what, uh, this young quarterback, as a, as a freshman, has hit his man twice on long passes, and they were, they, both of them have been dropped. Well, that may be the last. Uh, they're going to let um, Fairland go ahead and take a snap. Probably just take a knee, I would guess. Nope, they're going to call it, I think. Fairland is lining up. Really no need to take another snap. As far as that player of the game, uh, are we looking at maybe uh, Fairland's running back? Um, I'm thinking number 21 for the Fairland Dragons. Um, Quentin Cremines, he was uh, everywhere tonight for the Dragons. Um, just done, done an amazing job running the ball, followed the ball, followed his blockers very well. So the Adina player of the game, we're going to give it to uh, another uh, opposing school tonight. Uh, right. Much very, very well, much deserved. Number 21, uh, Quentin Permines for, uh, for the Fairland Dragons. Again, one of the better teams in the Southeast District. Uh, we expect to see a lot out of Fairland. Uh, down through the rest of the season. And we're expecting to see some good things, Bill, coming from the Rockets under, if we can get another uh, a week under Coach Polson this I, week. Uh, uh, as we mentioned earlier at the beginning of the season, we weren't expecting a lot from the Rockets. But, boy, I tell you what, my, I am anticipating good things happening and perhaps even uh, uh, more wins than what we thought we, they originally would have. Uh, just to give you some quick update scores around the area, and it was third quarter action. It was Jackson 26, Ironton 21. Uh, again, in overtime, Benton County 20, uh, Rock Hill 14. That's still in overtime, we believe. 
Uh, Portsmouth West 34, Portsmouth 7. That was third quarter action. Adina 39, Fairfield Christian 7. That uh, was Union Unota 42, Amanda Clear Creek 0. Gallia Academy 32, Athens 7. Um, South Point 20, Alexander 6. And then Zane Trace 40, Madison Plains a 0. Score to watch again, it's a final. Uh, Menford 41, Chesapeake 7, and Newark Catholic 45, Nelsonville York 0. So that that's a lot of the scores around uh, Southern Ohio tonight. We wanted to reach those out to you again. Menford will be here next Friday night. And again, we're, we're making a request uh, for all of those that can. Uh, please show up. And let's pack this stadium out for the players. Uh, we know, everybody knows, we don't need to go into detail. Uh, we know it's been a difficult time for uh, the team with all the controversy and things that was going on. Uh, spiritual, more, moral victory tonight for this Absolutely. team because a lot of things, Bill, we've seen um, that went the right direction. Right. If the, if, if the Golden Rockets hadn't had a little bit of grit here tonight, uh, that score would have been 60 yes. or higher. Yes. They, they really dug deep, and they stopped them when they could. And uh, at other times, they, they were just outmaneuvered, out-experienced, out-manned, and, um, and they, they did the best they could with what they had and the situation they were in. And uh, hats off, as you can see them down here, uh, meeting with the cheerleaders, just like it was if we won a game. Right. Uh, meeting on the sidelines, doing these things, celebrating uh, for a much improved game tonight. So uh, tonight, um, we want to, again, remind everybody to please come out and support uh, this ball club next Friday night right here as the Menford Falcons come to town and, um, again, su help support all of our sponsors. For Bill Norris, I'm Bub Norris. And the Norris boys. Yeah, saying good night. God bless. God bless America, everybody. Good night.